Welcome to Reno, Nevada, the biggest little city in the world for Powerlifting America's 2024 National Championships, day three. In the 76 kilo class, we have a tight battle and leading the charge, making her Nationals debut is Crennan Warford. In the 120 pluses, return of living legend Ray Williams as he faces off with Pablo Oliveris. Enrique Lugo and Tristan Nasalroth. In the 84 kilo class, we have Tiffany Savage, Aliza Tesler, and Maria Ruland. In the 84 pluses, the legendary Bonica Brown returns as she faces her greatest threat yet in Alexis Jones. In the 120 kilo class, Bob Matthews will show down with Devin Williams both of them expected to go over the world total record. Don't go anywhere. The action is about to begin. Welcome to Powerlifting America 2024 Nationals, day three. And this is the 76, 84, 84 plus as well as the 120, 120 plus. I am Ryan Six Pack Lapidat. I am accompanied in a booth with none other than freshly crowned American 93 kilo champion, Brandon Petrie. Brandon, it's been a hell of a nationals already. Battles all over the place and we're expecting more today in this finals. As you look back at your performance yesterday, what is it like when you're anticipating the first squat? When you're anticipating the first squad, it is nerve-wracking, to be honest. Um, I mean, just working so hard and doing all your training to have a shot at going to Worlds, going to Lithuania. For a lot of people, it's the first time they could travel internationally. Like, for me, this is going to be my first time traveling internationally. So you just know everything's on the line. And then you go out there, the nerves settle, you take out that first squad. And then finally, it just feels like the weight is off your shoulders. Sometimes that first squat is the toughest squat. It is. It just sets the tone for how the day is going to go. Looking at the 76s, uh, we have Crennan Warford, who comes in with a nominated total of 549.5. That's a big and then, total. Yeah, it's a big 76 kilo total. Immediate contender at Worlds should she get there. But Dana McNeil who's a former American champion, made it to Worlds previously, coming in with 542.5. Very close action, but we do need to also draw attention that earlier today in the B session, Chloe Dublin, who herself multiple-time Worlds veteran, registered a 548.5 kilo total. That is one kilo below Crennan's all-time best total. Crennan needs to be 100% and needs to hit if she wants to get that Team USA spot. Because as it stands right now, Chloe Dublin has that Team USA spot with that 548.5. Very interesting to see how that unfolds. In the 84s, obviously Amanda Lawrence, and what she did at Sheffield, will have that locked up. But in the 84 pluses, Alexis Jones is here battling the all-time great Bonica Brown. We're expecting fireworks, but first, Getting us underway, Joanna with 145 in the 76 kilo class. Okay, nice easy opener right there. That's pretty much what you want. <laughs> she looks happy with that, <laughs> that she made it through. Ordinarily, openers will look like that, but sometimes People fly a little too close to the sun or a tough cut. And the openers get a little grindy. 155 for Aliza Tesler. She's always all smiles when she hits the platform. Handled by Arian Messi Kamesi. Head coach for several Team USA World's teams. No issues there. No. And hopefully we don't see any issues on these opening squats. <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a dicey proposition. Here's the thing. You want your opener to be light enough, no surprises. But you don't want to be so light that you have a drastic jump 
until you're getting into some real weights. Yeah. Claire's eye, 175. Claire, we're used to seeing her in the 69s, moved up to the 76s. Not entirely sure what to anticipate from Claire. If you follow her on social media, hasn't posted a lot of her training, but she was absolutely a contender in the 69 kilo class. New weight class, new haircut, new Claire. 175 was easy. Let's go. Michelle Robbins now staying in the 76 kilo class. 175 for her. For some of these lifters, this is a big moment. You have some big names involved. Legends like Ray Williams, Bonica Brown, heavily hyped prospects like Cranon. That's a very controlled descent. And for yourself making your PA Nats debut, but you've been in other big competitions, did you feel nerves knowing what was on the line? Yeah, no, of course I felt nerves. Just had to make sure that I utilized it and just use it to my benefit and then just kind of like kept it pushing the whole way through. Jessica Kinney, 175, we're staying in 76 kilo class. Now you wonder, Crannon coming in with all types of hype, massive following online, number one nomination, but has so few competitions in her back pocket to deal with, to deal with this type of experience, this type of eyeballs on her, and an athletic performance. Yeah. One of the things that I'm excited about with Crannon to see is just like, that D1 athlete background and her being able to put forth that performance here today, even though she's not as much of a veteran as some of these other people, that potential that she has, will it show up today? And I'm excited to see if it's there. Now there's a lot of anticipation for what Krennic can bring. Tiffany Savage, 180 kilos. Now I had the pleasure to actually watch Tiffany um, at one of, the least, one of the meets back home in Texas, and she is fierce. She is a, like, just like that. She's a savage. She is a savage. I think her parents were doing something there. I, I, uh, <laughs> some people have those last names that are just perfect. I've been commentating the world championships for almost 10 years, and some people have the last name Power. Yeah. Stuff yeah. like that. You're like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you were destined for this. Tiffany makes easy work of her opener. We're gonna to move to the 84 pluses and we will bounce around in these weight classes. 180 stays on the bar for Patricia Johnson. Now, Patricia is a vet and she is one of the most amazing, most inspirational women in this sport. I'll tell you what, I love watching her compete every single time because she is strong. Veteran of the game, master lifter, and competing in the open because she's strong enough to. Well, when you open with 180 kilos, it says something. And I believe she's a doctor, right? Is that right? I think so. No excuses finding time to train then. <laughs> Makes easy work of 180. Yeah, smooth. For Dr. Patricia Johnson. Nominated third in the open. Marissa Rulin now in the 84 kilo class, 185. Now the 84 kilo class, with Amanda Lawrence registering 647 at Sheffield, that's gonna be out of reach for these ladies to make it onto Team USA how, for the world championship. Right. However, there are other national teams like the North American championship and there's also the title of becoming an American champion. So there's still something to fight for. That's for sure. Two to one. And Dana McNeil up next. Now Dana in the 76s, opening with 187.5. And if anyone head-to-head -head is gonna threaten Crannon, 
it's Dana. Dana is a veteran of the game, won national titles, represented her nation at the World Championships. She is not impressed nor intimidated by the hype behind Cranon. Dana, a member of the U.S. military, 40 years old. And the biggest thing with her is really being able to see if she makes it six for six because that deadlift mm. is her secret weapon. And she will definitely load anything on that bar to secure this win. Yeah, that's – she will have the last say. And when you have a deadlift like Dana, she's never going to be fully out of it as long as she can go six for six, like you said, and hang tight. Well, there you go. There you go. It's a good start. Now, I believe she's with Mike T, who's competing in this flight, so he won't be handling her. Well, she does well, look like she's being handled by the legendary Gene Bell, so... Well, she's in good hands. <laughs> he, he'll know, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> he may have been around the block or two. Larissa Spencer, 84 plus, 187.5. Steady opener. No, called on depth. And that was the first one. You never really want to get in that position. Yeah, you know what? From the side view, it looked a little high. Yeah. She could have just gone just a little more down. Been right there. And here she is, Cranon Warford, 76 kilo class. And a lot of hopes and aspirations resting on the shoulders of this young lady monstrous opening squat. Yeah, she really has an opportunity here to make a statement to the rest of the world if things go her way, but she has got some competition to win that national team spot. This is the start of possibly the Cranon era. That was easy. Two to one. Off to a quick start. Two to one is all she needs. Melissa Copeland, 84 plus. Of course, in the 84 plus, you have the legendary Bonica Brown who has an absolutely outstanding resume. However, Alexis Jones making her Powerlifting America Nationals debut is the woman everyone thinks to beat in 2024. Heavily hyped. Okay. Melissa makes easy work 197.5. Yeah. And with Alexis, I mean, she's been gunning for this for a long time. I mean, she's been doing it in other federations. She's been doing it for a minute. And I really do believe that this is her time to officially show us and the world that she's here. Huh? Speaking of Alexis Jones, here she is, 227.5. She might be the strongest woman alive. She might be the strongest woman that ever lived. The totals she has previously registered are outstanding. Can she bring it to the Powerlifting American Nationals platform? And depending on how this day goes beyond, right to Worlds, the proof is in the pudding. We're about to find out. And I think this is going to be lightning fast. Wow, <laughs> that was 501 pounds, like she's sitting out of a chair. It's amazing. And she is unfazed, unbothered, and ready for more. I believe we can expect a really big jump out of her. 11-time world champion, Bonica Brown, 265.
Bonica has been in many a squat battle in her day. This should be just completely routine for her at this point. work at 265 yeah we're gonna see some big squats today that is a fact sir the squat world record if you're interested 300.5 by Sonita at Sheffield Joa Ayanota in the 76 kilo class 152.5 She is just all smiles. She is just looking carefree, ready to get the work in. Yeah, you got to embrace the moment sometimes. It's the bigger name lifters coming in with all the hype that got to carry that pressure. They're vying for those national team spots. And it allows other lifters just to appreciate the moment. Hit some PRs. Nicely done. Very great second attempt. Handles a seven and a half kilo jump well. Aliza Tesla, 167.5. Tesla, sorry. Bar is loaded for Aliza Tesla, 369 pounds. Hopefully nobody's reading lips there. <laughs> I hope so. 167.5. Aliza has squatted 172.5 before. This is a pretty big jump, 12 and a half kilos. Wow, that was fast and easy. I think she has a personal best on her way. Yeah, I would suspect. Oh, oh no. caught on depth. Now, this is where that tough conversation happens. Right. Do they go up regardless? Because that was so fast. Yeah, it was a yeah. stitch high. Yeah. Strength for it for sure. Do they go up regardless, do you think, Brennan? I would say I would go up and at least match the personal best, and that may even help carry her to depth better. And I think she has the strength to actually pull through. Because repeating it, she may just be high again. The strength is definitely there. 185 for Claire's eye. Folks, if you like what you see, let them know right now. Make some noise, clap your hands. Claire's previous PR is 193. Let's see how 185 moves. Yeah, she smiles, so she's happy with it. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested in seeing where she goes from there. I would say anywhere between like a five to seven and a half kilo jump. 185 for Jessica Kinney in the 76 kilo class. Yeah, very easy work. Ten kilos. Now that zero questions on depth. That, with that type is, of squat. If that got a red call, everybody's in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Theresa Spencer. Now she missed her first one on depth, so this one is very crucial. So that way she get the pressure taken off of her. Is that Meg Scanlon handling her? Looks like it is. Looks she like it is my teammate. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, the strength is there. Just got to sink it to a convincing depth. There you go. I look better. Let's see. And she's in the competition. Two to one. 
Raise the bar 418 for Michelle Robbins. Michelle Robbins, 190 kilos, a sizable 15 kilo jump. You know, I swear I saw the lady handling her, stretching out herself in the back. I thought she was an athlete. I, I thought she was getting ready to compete herself. <laughs> Taking the handling job pretty seriously. Man, it's a hard day's work. That's, that's a fact. Right on the line for depth. Oh, became a moot point. She just got pitched forward just a tad. And right there at that sticking point, it was too much for her to force it up. Uh, I think she can make a little correction and get it back as long as she doesn't lose her positioning. But that was a good fight. 190, 10 kilo jump for Tiffany Savage in the 84 kilo class. Tiffany, number one nomination in the 84s. I had a chance to talk to Chris Big Body, her handler on Team Flex, mm -hmm. yesterday about Tiffany. Said training's been going very well. High hopes for her. Tiffany's previous squat PR, 187.5. So you could tell by the second attempt being a PR, they're confident. Very quick. And after watching how that second attempt moved, I see why they're confident. Yeah. Three white lights. Making progress. Patricia Johnson, 84 plus, 190 kilos. She squatted 202.5. Made a 10 kilo jump here. Let's see how this moves. Might be an indicator of where she might end up. Despite being a rather small 84 plus and a master lifter, Pat comes in nominated third. Solid lift. Two to one, it's good. Raise the bar to 429. Ladies and gentlemen, if you love the United States Air Force, 195 now for Dana McNeil. And Dana, again, has that monster deadlift. She wants to hang tight. She doesn't want to get in a squat battle with Crannon. Just wants to register three squats, gain some kilos. Every kilo she gets in the subtotal is another kilo she doesn't have to deadlift for the win. Exactly. All she needs is just consistent progression on each lift from here on out. Sometimes lifters get caught up trying to chase in the squat, chase in the bench. That's problematic. Depth is good. Yeah. That is solid. Now, the most that I would go for her would probably be like five kilos. Because you just want to solidify, good squat, make three for three on bench as well, and then use your secret weapon. Five kilos, let's see. It is such a tight battle. And then again, Chloe Dublin's 548.5 from earlier today. Threats everywhere in the 76 is Marissa Ruland. Depth is there. Let's see. Oh, yeah, perfect squat. Spotters and loaders, loaders getting 207.5 ready for Melissa Copeland. We are in the 84 plus.
Well, not all the way. We still got one more 76 to squat after her. And we're moving relatively quickly. How did you find the pace yesterday when you were competing? Was it what you're used to? Was it quick? Uh, I train pretty, like, fast in general. So the speed, actually, of the meet was pretty much faster than what I've had before. But it honestly just felt like a training day. Mm. It is a factor. That's a nice squat. At the World Championships, some have mentioned how quick it moves at the World Championships. Obviously, Worlds now being shown on CBS, being shown on Eurosport, being shown on the Olympic Channel. So the speed in which they run the meet has picked up. It's fast action, viewer friendly. The lifters got to adjust and be ready for it. Crennan Warford, 212.5. And this is well beyond what Crennan's previously done. 205.5 is her best coming in on her second attempt. Already PR territory. This is going to be huge. She needs this squat. Yeah, this is, it's dicey. If you load up too much and miss, she can't afford to miss these. It opens the door for everyone else. Depth for sure. Oh my goodness. And she will have another squat, but that was not the script for Crennan. Now, the biggest thing is gonna be the turnaround because I've seen people fail and come back before. And if she only had just like lost positioning or her footing or anything like that, she may be able to come back and hit that with a little bit more control. But it really just determined, it's really just more on how does she self-correct? And I think she may be able to, but we'll see. I mean, we, we didn't know what her training numbers were, and uh, obviously they were confident enough to load that weight, but when someone's inexperienced at this level, hitting a PR on the second attempt, it can be tough. Now, she could show character and poise, come back, hit that, and mute, mute that discussion altogether, and it becomes a learning experience, and she actually can pull from that. Alexis Jones, 247.5. Alexis, despite her age, is a veteran of the game. Nice smooth 20 kilo jump that I feel will move just like her opener. Yeah. Picture perfect, and Alexis doesn't break a smile, doesn't break anything, just so calm, cool, collected. She's like the Terminator out there. She knows what she brings to the table. Bonica Brown. 272.5. We're in the 600 pound range already. You know, that's what I really like about this sport, just in general, is like seeing how the people are different. Because you see, Alexis took a 20 kilo jump to her second. You see Bonica really only took a seven and a half kilo jump. So it's not necessarily about where you start, but it's about where you finish on that third attempt. Yeah, you always get a little bit worried for people who brag about where they're opening. I'm opening with this, I'm opening with that. That's not the attitude you want. Nobody cares where you're opening. It matters where you end up. Don't open too heavy. Never went on openers. That's right. Well, hopefully not. <laughs> Bonica. Veteran of the game. Likes her work. Very two to one. Yeah. Based on her sticking point, I would say she maybe have five left in her. Five kilos. Yeah, it's a difficult proposition. She's, she's really here for that squat. But once we get into bench and then get into deadlifts, Alexis has the ability to take over. Ayanota, 160 for her third and final squat in the 76 kilo class. And wow, has the 76 kilo class really opened up with Crennan getting her opener, missing her second. Dina McNeil now, as well as Chloe Dublin earlier today, 
must be leaning in. I'm super excited to see what's going to happen because Dana McNeil put in 210 for her third squat, and that is seven and a half kilos over her previous best of 202.5. So they must be feeling really, really good on squat. and must have seen something very convincing on that second attempt. And here's the thing. If Dana leaves with 210 and Krennan leaves with just her opener, that is not how we thought we would leave the squat event. Not at all. And that changes the game because it only gets worse when we get to deads. Yeah, 170 for Aliza. And even if Krennan gets 212.5, we didn't think they would leave squats just two and a half kilos apart. Yeah. So no matter how you dice it, this is an incredibly close competition now. Aliza, 170, 167.5 was easy. So they That's did depth. go up two and a half. That looked like depth to me. And two to one. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, all right, we'll take it. My bad. So that's what I was saying. Sometimes you go up and the weight helps just push you down. And as long as you have the strength, you can really make it worth it. And especially when you're here on the national stage, really this is it. Like, you really want to lay it all on the line and just really showcase the best self that you can put forth. Claire Zai, 190. And Claire will get fired up when it comes to her top end lifts. So Five kilos is just a stitch too much. And 185 was a bit of work. She fluffs it off. She's a veteran. A lot of lifting left to go. Michelle Robbins, 190 once again. You know, we're talking about Michelle's handler stretching out. And I mentioned you didn't hear it because it was on the stream when you were competing. But Gavin Eden's handler cuts weight with him. When they were at Sheffield, Gavin Eden's handler forgot to recall. Like, oh, yes, I was cutting weight with Gavin earlier. He was saying how, oh, my head was bumping. I felt fatigued. And, oh, yeah, I, I cut weight as well. But the weight cuts can be a factor. Ooh, slow and controlled. Okay. The thing when you're that slow and controlled, the refs have all day to scrutinize your depth. And that's exactly what happens. And if I'm honest, it looked a stitch high from the front, and it does from the side as well. It's like if you're going to go that slow and tension that much, you have to sink it, have to bury it to the floor. Jessica Kinney, 195 kilo jump from her second. One eighty-five was her previous PR coming into the competition. Depth. Smooth. Yeah. A great meet PR for her. Good third attempt selection. She's obviously happy with that. Teresa Spencer. One ninety. She should have this. It's about 10 kilos below her best. Smooth. And two to one again. Two to one, picks up a couple more kilos. And Tiffany Savage, 195 in the 84 kilo class. That bar is loaded for Tiffany. Ladies and gentlemen, these are third attempts. 
And so if she gets this, this is going to be seven and a half kilos over her best. And this would help set up for her to have a big PR total. Now, this may not get her to the world stage, but this is definitely going to set up some big things for her in the future. Yeah, there's other national teams, North Americans. Obviously, SPD also has other money meets to come. She needs as big a total as possible. Settling her feet. There you go. Oh, is she strong? There you go. Now that's how you capitalize. <laughs> She's fired up. You got Big Body all fired up too. You got Big Body all fired up too. <laughs> Pat Johnson, 195. <laughs> On the third round of squats, and this is a pivotal round of squats for a lot of these ladies. Yeah, I think she's just playing it smart. Definitely taking what's there on the day, building up the total. I mean, her best is a little bit above this, so I think that she should be able to smoke this pretty, pretty well. Oh, nice catch. Nice catch by the squatters and loaders. She's actually surprised herself how quickly the gentleman got in there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, fellas. <laughs> I guess you went up five keys. It's like, that may be all I have today. Marissa Ruland, 84 kilo class, 205 for her third and final squat. This will match her previous personal best. And she's in a bit of a battle with Aliza. Both of them going to be on the podium, but who's, what color will their medals be? Tiffany Savage, a solid favorite for gold. But the rest of the podium yet to be established. Dana McNeil, and this is a pivotal third and final squat for Dana. Can apply all types of pressure on Crennan. Crennan missed her second attempt, appeared to be possibly on strength. Dana has an opportunity to spring a massive upset, tipping over the apple cart and rewriting the script. She would love to get back to IPF Worlds. Is she a big game hunter today? Well, she looks fired up, Brandon. And this is going to be huge because I don't think anyone saw this coming in. I don't think anyone saw her hitting this huge PR squat, especially not making a 15 kilo jump from her second. Massive PR, 15 kilo jump from her second. Her best was 202.5 at 40 years old, looking for a massive PR. It could be the thing of legends. Oh, oh. nice catch. It isn't over yet, though. It is not. Because she's gone two for three. And thus far, Crennan retaking her second attempt weight. And at this point, if Crennan misses this as well, I mean, the gap is only two and a half kilos with deadlift still to come. It is so tight. And then, again, a reminder, Chloe Dublin's 548.5 earlier today. Pressure all over on Crennan. Can she rise to the occasion? Now again, when you talk about pressure, these are the moments that an athlete lives for to redeem themselves in the actual competition themselves. And with her background, I'm sure she's been prepared for a moment like this. This is a baptism by fire for a young lifter like Crennan with so much hype to be tested in the first event like this. And she could pull it all around with one squat. 60 seconds to make the world right. 
And that's how you write your own story. And that's how you write your own story, Brendan. And that's what separates athletes from people who just compete. And that right there is an athlete. She has learned a lot about the sport and herself today in this squad event. Yeah. Melissa Copeland, 212.5. And that just goes to show, like you just, you can never rule a lifter out just because they miss it because you never know what was going through their head, what the nerves are. Anyone can come back from anything. These are learning lessons and experience she needs if she makes the U.S. team going into Worlds. You need these experiences. Have them now. Yes. Not in Lithuania. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're not getting ahead of ourselves. We're saying if she makes the team, there's a lot of lifting left to go. Nicely done to 12.5 by Melissa Copeland. Alexis Jones, 260. Alexis has squatted as much as 276.5. Somewhat in cruise control right now for the squats. Justin Nutt. Sorry, Shane Nutt. Handling her. I believe that Alexis is just playing strategy. I think everything is just about building the total. I don't think she's really going to stress too hard about trying to push for personal bests or really do anything. I think she's just trying to collect a win on every single attempt. Alexis has totaled 721.5 before. That is absolutely monstrous. Makes easy work at 260. The advantage she has in the bench press and the advantage she has in the deadlift is monstrous. Whenever you are a complete lifter, it gives you the ability to be on cruise control on all three. You don't have to really lean too hard on a deadlift or a squat and then it all comes down to the third attempt. You could just go nine for nine, build up that total and just cruise and get your ticket. It's a favorable six, position to seven, be in, and you're absolutely right. If you're a specialist, you are forced to load up on that one event, and it needs to come through for you on the day. But when you have a variety of weapons, you don't need to swing them all at full force. Bonica Brown, 280, and I believe the bar has been called loaded. I see the clock winding down. If I'm not mistaken, it said the, they've already called her out. So I don't see her on the wings. There used to be a bit of a conversation happening on the side. Now, this did happen yesterday as well, I believe, with Gavin, that there was confusion as far as like him coming out and like the clock running. Mm. And so they had, we had to wait, and then they gave him the time back, and then he came out to squat. So I wonder if this is another one of those situations. Yeah, we're about to get an announcement. All right, it looks like Bonita has decided to use a little strategy. She has passed. Oh, wow, Bonica okay. Brown passing. And this is a bit of a surprise for myself. Bonica, by far her best event is a squat event. If she's going to build the biggest total possible, it'll be by taking all three squats. But we don't know the background story. Maybe she's dealing with something. Maybe the second attempt, something happened. Not entirely sure, but somewhat surprising there. And we're going to move directly with no break into the second flight with the 120s and 120 pluses. Some legends in this lineup. If you see there, Mike T in the background being handled by legends like the Garys. But first, Regan Henderson, 290 for his opening squat. No, I, actually, I, was Sorry, say, I actually know Reagan. Um, so he's from Houston as well. Oh, wow. And he trains at TSS in Houston. And he's always fun to watch at all these local meets. So I'm glad to see him on a national stage. And this is going to be a really good debut for him. And they're bringing out the big guns for spotting with the big boys. Probably a good idea. You got Ray Williams, who could load up to 1,000 pounds. 
Yeah, I hope they bring out two more spotters for him. Travis, a well reputable strong man in the back spotting. Mike Desher, 300 kilos even, legendary athlete and coach, credited with bringing the RPE system to powerlifting programming into powerlifting. Nowadays, everybody uses the RPE system, if not the percentage. It's because of this man. Definitely one of the leaders that led to a lot of people being great in the sport. And despite all these years of competing, he's still here at the national level. And he's a podium threat. He's not just here to participate. Huge brace. Nicely done. And despite the fact his appear looking at his appearance, you couldn't meet a nicer, more soft-spoken guy. Yeah. Now Big Dev, Devin Williams, 305, making his PA Nats debut. And he is the biggest threat to Bob Matthews' ambitions for Team USA. It's close enough that he can force Bob to have to hit his lifts. And it's interesting though, because he's actually always in a battle, it seems like. Uh, he just got off a battle over there at you know, USAPL Nationals, and now he's coming over here to the PA National side, and he's right back in the thick of things again. And these battles, when you're battle tested, it serves to you. You know how to deal with the nerves, you know how to deal with the temp selection. Wow, that was smooth. smooth. If we look at previous personal bests, Dev is 950.5, Bob Matthews 960. They're within 10 kilos of each other. And when you have totals that big, 10 kilos is a, literally a missed bench attempt, let alone squat or deadlift attempt. Right. And if you tell me, well, and I know you're, you're training mates with Bob Matthews, but <laughs> um, if you tell me that like Bob's gotten stronger, Big Dev has as well. Very tight, very close race. It won't be over to the very last deadlift. 305, William O'Neill White. In the 120 pluses. Then of course we have Ray Williams versus Pablo Olivares. And Ray Williams needs the best Jesus's Sheffield total, which is 1,113 pounds, kilos, sorry. And Ray Williams' all-time best is 1,112.5, so it's feasible. It's possible. 305, no major ask for William. And like I was telling you earlier, if there is a percentage, that means there's a chance. That's right. And anything can happen in this sport. Do not be surprised. Jonathan Avril, 307.5, 120 plus. These gentlemen are big, shifting big weights. Could we see a thousand pound squat? Could be in the cards. Could we see in a thousand kilo total? These are the big questions, <laughs> my friend. Zarin, 315 for his opening squat in the 120s. Oh, that's amazing. He was actually handling, Robert here was handling in my session. So to, from handling one of his athletes last night to competing today, that's amazing to see. Travis Ortmeier the head spotter there in the back. I recognize Travis was at the North American Championship spotting as well. Ray Williams was there. And I like that when the weights get big for the super heavyweights, mm. they break out Travis. 
Wow, 315 has no resistance for Robert. And now we have my teammate, my brother. <laughs> Bob Matthews, 325, one of the craftsmen. Now he is opening up over 700 pounds, just as he should. And this is gonna really set the tone and see where is Bob going to be today. Obviously handled by Marcellus. I was talking to Bob earlier today and he said his legs feel good, arms feel good, everything is just ready to go. He just wanted to get under a barbell. And now let's see if he could capitalize on that feeling. He's lifting as a 120, weighed in at 106.25. He could easily have cut to a 105. Depth for sure, wow. That was smooth. You gotta respect when a guy is 106 competing in the 120s. It's a David and Goliath matchup. Enrique Lugo, former national champion in the 120s, now campaigning in the 120 pluses. Lugo's been at the world championships. He's accustomed to a good old fashioned Donnybrook, 325. If I'm not mistaken, he was one pull away from being a world champion. That's right? right. So he's been in tight battles before. Looked good, but the opener looked a little bit rough. But I don't know if that's just his squat style or if he's actually having some wear and tear on his body early on. 337.5 for Tristan Nazarod, talking about former 120s that are national champions. Tristan and Enrique, rivals in the 120s, swapping national records. One year Lugo won, the other year Nazarod won. Both of them moving to 120 for the trilogy matchup. So we have a rivalry here in the 120s. Let's see how that shakes up. You gotta love when your rival moves up in a weight yeah. class with you. It's like, no, 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 you think you're leaving me? No, 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 come here. <laughs> it ain't over yet. We're not finishing it at one for one. And with the way that that squat just moved, yeah. it's gonna be an interesting day. Listen, I've been following Tristan on social media and this prep has been fantastic. Now, this is a moment that I've been waiting to see. We haven't seen Pablo on the PA stage in about two years, I believe. And I'm glad that he's finally back. And if he's, anything like his brother, like I know he is, we're gonna see a massive squad out of him today. Training partners with his brother, Jesus. Pablo weighing in at 200 kilos. That might be one of the bigger body weights that he's weighed in at, and that's really gonna help his squat and his bench press. His training's been gone great. Yeah, I really love the YouTube channel that they have together. Yeah. It is just amazing. I believe what is it is, the Iron Theory YouTube channel. If you guys wanna check it out, their story is amazing. 370 for an opener. And how can you not be strong and push to the limit when you're training with Jesus Olivares on a regular basis? Let's go, Pablo. You've been here before. Oh. And that was smooth and easy. Let's see. Ah. Depth. And if I'm honest, yeah. it's difficult to check depth on these super heavyweights at times. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going up to Yeah, probably stopped a little high from the side as well. Strength is there, though. Ray Williams, oh, wow, 420 opening. That is a, that's um, old school Ray Williams, yeah. and that is dangerous. Not only for Pablo, but possibly Jesus, because, again, Ray doesn't need to break the world record in the best Jesus has ever posted. He just needs to beat was Jesus posted up at Sheffield. And that's within his means, Brandon. If we have old Ray, better yet, if we have a new Ray, oh, this well is said. dangerous for both Oliveira's brothers. He could take both down with one stone. Well said. I still get shivers watching this guy do his thing when he digs into that bar. I'm far away from the platform, and I'm still scared a little bit. <laughs> a, a living legend. <laughs> oh, 
420 with authority. Now, oh, it's, it is on it is now. On. And seeing Ray Williams and Matt Gary fist pump on the sidelines, I'm getting flashbacks of 2017, 2018. I haven't seen him with that much rage coming off of his squad since 2019 when I saw him at the Arnold. You know what he did at that Arnold? He squatted 1,080. <sighs> Don't tease us, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> now, he does, we'll see what he ends up doing. A lot of lifting left to go, but already a very interesting day. 307.5 for Reagan. Now, based off his opener, I think that this will also go smooth, but this will be really telling if he gets a chance to squat into the 700s. That's a sizable 17 and a half kilo jump. Let's see how this moves. Now, his best is 312 and a half. And if this moves as well as I think it should, hopefully he has a PR today. Yeah, I would oh. be very comfortable loading a PR. I think good. 10 more. kilos or, or a stitch more for the 700 pound breaking yeah. into there. I would say 317 and a half on the dot would yeah. be what I, you know, where I would go. Um, I think he has that in him today. And speaking of, that's where Mike T already is. Yeah. 317.5 for Mike Tashir in the 120s. 17 and a half kilo Six, jump. 99. What do you think the goal is for Mike T on today when it comes to the podium? You know, that's an interesting question. He's below Bob and Devin, but if either of those gentlemen miss because they're pushing each other, the door of opportunity swings open for him. If not, there are other national teams and other competitions. Obviously, SPD has other money meets like rally meet and as such other opportunities for him he's really just got to post up the biggest total possible and see where the chips fall and speaking of the big two devin williams big dev 325 for a second attempt Bar is loaded. 325 was his previous PR, so he's matching that already in his second attempts we knew we made fast progress he actually had an SBD day and almost got to 980. If he could do something like that today and wrap it up and finish it, that is very much going to test Bob. He's capable. Oh, smooth. And that was smooth. Now... When he did that SBD day, honestly, he only needs to really squat 330 or 335 in order to get a total to where his bench can help him get to that 980 mark. So he really doesn't need to shoot for much here on the squat. You would advise proceed with caution, maybe five, seven and a half kilos? For sure, because his moneymaker is the bench press. That's his secret weapon. Jonathan Avril, 325. We're in the 120 pluses. Strong. Yeah, easy work there. And the lift is good to the one. 716 stays on the bar. Our next lifter is 325, a popular weight here. White. William O'Neill White will take it as well. Bar is loaded for William. His best is 340, so depending on how this moves. I wonder if we're going to see a match today, or we could at least chip it a little bit. Sizable 20 kilo jump. Pretty standard once you get heavier in weight. Yeah, that's right. It's just a, it's a lot to take 700 plus pounds back to back to back.
It was based on how that moved. I think, I think 340 or a little bit over is in him today. And if you're interested, Ray Williams has 445 kilos for a second attempt. 455 is that magical 1,000-pound squat number. We're getting close. First, Lugo, 335 for his second attempt. 325 move well. Well, I'm very interested to see how this second move, because this first one looked rough, but again, it depends on the type of squatter that you are. Some people just squat rough, and that's just how it is. Penna will grind in the warm-up room. That actually looked yeah. a little better. Yeah. And then some people get better as they squat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you wonder if sometimes it's got to get the nerves out or just get a little tighter, a little more, take the weight a little more seriously. Yeah. It is a little bit different when the lights are shining on you. Some people, as soon as they first step out there for the opener, they embrace it. For some people, they got to get used to it. So, Robert Lazarin, 340. This is the qualifier for the ITF. 25 kilo Classic jump for him. In We're in the 120 pluses. Trying to punch their ticket to the world. Also interesting to note, Pablo, who missed 370, moving up 20 kilos to 390, despite not getting his opener in. Now, I understand Pablo missed on a technicality, but... If you missed your second on strength, you really didn't leave yourself wiggle room. It's a dicey proposition, but he's chasing Ray. I will say I'm not completely mad at him jumping 20 kilos because he is a big guy. And even though the weight that he has is heavy, it may not be heavy enough to push him down. And he's probably used to getting depth with those heavier weights. So uh, we could see this actually being more beneficial for him, but we'll see. Very good point. Bob Matthews, 347.5 for his second Bob attempt. 22.5 kilo jump, that's a big jump. Now every lift that Bob has, he needs to make it. He cannot go seven for nine, eight for nine, and expect to beat Big Dev going nine for nine. Every single lift matters. This is a, this is a fight, this is a scrap. As talented as Bob is, He's a 106 kilo man going against a giant like Big Dev and he can't afford to miss. Looks smooth. Looks great. What kind of a jump do you anticipate, Brandon? Now with that being a little weird and I'm used to Bob's sticking point, honestly I would say maybe like 10 kg jump from there. I think he could possibly have that. Safe call would be seven and a half, but Bob is a little ballsy, so I bet he does ten. It's yeah, it's a tough conversation. You need to load up enough to be big dev, but not spill over and have to rely on your second. Yeah. 2020 hindsight becomes a factor. Tristan Nasalrod, 352.5. Tristan coming into this, 355.5 was his previous personal best. But Tristan moving up to the 120 pluses and training has been going great. Yes, it has. He's squatted in prep, 362.5, 800 pounds. Might be pacing for that today. Now here we go, this is gonna be a big moment for Pablo. This is gonna be pretty high stakes because you don't ever wanna be in a situation where you're left with one squat gets you in the meat. But I really do think that him going up 20 kilos is gonna help him hit that depth. He'll still be strong and we should see at least two white lights. 390, Pablo Oliveras. Telling his brother, let me get to that specific point in this song. You can never pull the headphones out too early. <laughs> pull them out early. <laughs> can Pablo pull a Krennan? Making sure that the bar is right where he wants it so he could be centered. Because you definitely don't want to be lopsided when you're dealing with that much weight. The crowd is rallying behind Pablo. Strength is there, just needs to hit depth. Better. And 
That's exactly what happens. Let's see what the call is. Much better. And three three lights, yeah. Yep. Like now, it's, it was a lot more work. Yeah. But it brought them down to depth. It's, it's very similar like when you're deadlifting. People who bobble at the top, if they open up too light, they move the weight so fast that it ends up being reds. Sometimes that heavier weight actually can help. Well, if you like heavy weight, 445. Let's see how this helps Ray Williams, 120 plus. I don't know why, but I feel a stitch nervous. When you got a legend like Ray, everybody rallies behind him. If he moves this, anything like his opener, we may see something pretty nasty. Can he turn back the clock one last time? What a magical moment it would be. We're 10 kilos away from a thousand pounds, a thousand pounds, yeah, squat. Converting in my head, this is around 980. That is a massive squat. And Ray, oh. two to one, it's good. I think a thousand pounds will be loaded in 455, or does he go more? And that's what I want to see, because that honestly looked good, but it all depends on how he feels. But that didn't move too much slower than his open. No. So I don't know what we may see today. Does he load more? We may see an upset that no one saw in any storyline. Interesting story unfolding. Reagan, 320. A reminder, Ray needs 1,113 kilo total to make Team he put USA. In 460. Oh my goodness, Brendan. Where might this lead? People are gonna be breaking out their calculators. <laughs> <laughs> Reagan Henderson, 320. In the 120 kilo class. And he did officially get his 705 squat on the national platform. That's a huge PR for him. 700 pound milestone in Mike T, 327.5. Mike looks a whole lot more serious for this one. So a little follow up on the Ray Williams. The 460 is 1,014 pounds. Now that's a little bit behind his best squat that would you know put him in contention, but we don't know where his bench is and we don't know where his deadlift is, but he is a force if he gets that 1,014. I got a feeling if Ray posts up those big numbers, whether it's Worlds or another platform, everybody's going to want to be watching. It's a thousand pounds. Who doesn't want to see that? <laughs> That's for sure. And that music was timed perfectly to start as soon as he hit the hole in squads. <laughs> Is this a movie? Oh, wait, two to one. Two they can approach the jury. Let's see from the side here. That's on the I, line. I would approach the jury because you never know. You know, if you could get at least one, because all you need is one overturn. We saw it happen yesterday with Russell Orhe. So all you need is one, and you can make that squad good. Those conversations are pivotal. Big Dev, 335. Coming into this, 325 was his best. He made easy work of 325 on his second attempt. Now this lines up perfectly with what he did in his SBD day. So if he can get this, he is on, play, on pace. But if he misses, it really opens up the door for Bob to just take this away. On pace for 980, and that's really gonna push Bob. Can he apply that pressure? Oh, yeah! 
brings a warning shot to Bob Matthews. The battle is on, young man. 335. He is on pace. He needed that. That was a perfect call. Not a kilo that more a on that bar. Call. A perfect call. What a scrap we have now. We wanted one, but we got it. Jonathan Avril, 337.5, sorry. Don't you just love it when the storylines play out? I, yeah, <laughs> we needed this. Yeah. First, Cranning gave us some excitement, and now the 120s, and look at Ray Williams, the 120 pluses. Uh, Makes our job easy, sir. Oh, nice third squat for Jonathan. That was a smooth squad, only two and a half. Ooh. But depth, depth, unfortunately, strength was there. Ah, I was right on the line. But they're not going to give them to you. you Got to convince the jury and the judges. Sorry, William O'Neill White, 345, 20 kilo jump for him. Personal best by five kilos. And based off his second, I predicted this to be, you know, just a little bit over what he hit as far as like his 340. Five kilos over, we'll see. But I definitely saw that he had the strength to be his previous best. He's getting the crowd involved, getting everyone hyped, because he knows how much this means to him. This is five kilos more than what he's ever done before. Strength is there. Let's, Let's see, see this. The... Yeah, both thinking the same thing, and that's why. Yep. I mean, we'll see from the sides. The judges. Yeah. yeah. That's, that was tight. That was close. It's... With that narrow stance, it's just one of those where it looks like it's going low, but that's just because of how much work room you have to work with. And sometimes it looks like you're hitting depth, but you're just a hair short. 345 for Enrique Lugo. And that puts pressure on lifters like Ray and Bob in these battles and these hunts that they have. You got to hit your depth. They're keeping you on. It's Lugo, 345, and 347 and a half was his previous personal best. Lugo's got more body weight behind him now, so we should see a successful lift here. The more weight you put on, the better squatter he becomes. Yeah, you're right. I feel like he's warming up and he just ran out of attempts. Bob Matthews, 360. Previously, 352 and a half was his best. Seven and a half kilos up from there. Bob, just a 106 body weight. It's incredible, 360 for him. Now, remember when I said that he's ballsy? I said 10 kilos, he went up 12 and a half. So it, if you miss this, I mean, even if he hits, it's a close battle. But if he misses, it is really dicey. But if there's one thing that is everyone has seen in Bob's training is that he unlocks a different animal in him whenever the stakes are up. And Bob hits Perfect. and hits big. Perfect. You said when the pressure's on, Bob finds another gear. The David and Goliath matchup continues. It is far from over. No, it's far from over. It's just a squad event. Robert Lazarin, 365 for his third and final squad. in the 120 pluses. It's all big lifts from here, 800 pounds and up, all the way up to over 1,000 pounds. Nobody's sweating more than our spotters. Honestly, the pressure is on them for these next three lifts. Yeah, you. nobody's cheering for the lifters more than them. <laughs> Things go wrong, you're gonna zerker squat this weight. Nice on depth. Let's go, let's go. Oh, and nice there they catch. go. 
Great job by the spotters. Yeah, that bar started coming back down. And it was a nice catch. And that's why our strong man is back there. Yeah, Travis, a legend in strong man. They're breaking it out because Tristan Nazelrod, now I told you, 365, he hit this in training, or 362 and a half in training, around there. It's over 800 pounds. And he is fired up for this one. And based off his second, I can see him definitely getting this 804. Tristan resuming his battle with Lugo in the 120 pluses. Smooth. Wow, he is a good squatter. See the call? Three white lights. Yeah, he knew he had that in him. From the moment he walked off, from the moment he took it out there and started descending, I saw him start smiling. And Pablo Oliveras had a bit of a scare with 370, not from the weight, but depth. Found depth with 390, moving up to 405. 15 kilo jump. Now, the thing is, he needs this regardless, because although Ray has put in the 460, Ray still hasn't hit it yet. So he needs to hit this 405 to be in contention to still get that national championship. Yeah, the battle's not over. Ray starts missing and Pablo starts hitting. The tables can turn. gets heavier and he finds more gears and, oh we'll have to see if they approach the jury I, I would go to the jury on that one yeah you know, that kind of looked okay from that side it looked very similar to a second squat and if that one passed i believe they can definitely get it overturned so we shall see an update on that 460 for ray williams Fifteen kilo jump. Everybody is on their feet for Ray Williams. It is always scary when you see an illegal bar already bending. That is the stiffest bar ever made. You know what? I think I'm gonna go on my feet as yeah, well. I think so too. Some things you. Bypass the monitor, and you gotta see in the flesh with your own eyes. I'm gonna record on my phone too, join everyone else. Oh my! Oh my! One more time, we are seeing Ray come back to life. Can you believe it? And I don't think there's any Oliveras that's safe today. <laughs> <laughs> wow, there's Jesus in the wings. What a shot that was, by the way. And Jesus Oliveras in the sidelines congratulating Ray. And if those two gentlemen ever meet head to head on the platform, for a while there, the talk was the matchup doesn't make sense. Yeah. Ray is past his prime, yep. and Jesus is in his prime. We need to rethink that narrative now after what we just saw. Nothing that I just witnessed looks like he's past his prime. It looks like he's entering a new state. A second wind. <laughs> wow. You know, they call that sometimes a reawakening. While yeah. we're witnessing it. Yeah, this is amazing. Got to love it. Love it, the sport. And that will conclude our squat session. We will take a quick 10-minute break and come back for the bench. See you in 10.
And welcome back to the Powerlifting America 2024 Nationals, day three. And we have some breaking news. Pablo Olivares' third squat that was initially ruled a no lift due to depth has been overturned by the jury and it's good. The battle continues, Brennan. That was pivotal. Very pivotal. And, and like I said, when I saw the squat, it looked very similar to a second. So I would have been very shocked that they didn't go to the jury because those are the times that you do go. And it worked out for them. I had a quick conversation with Crennan as well in between sessions. She said she was just a little bit nervous on that second attempt. Eased her nerves and gaining the experience on the job. And that's pivotal as well for her because she is in a tight battle with Dana McNeil as well as Chloe Dublin's previously registered 548.5 in Group B. Marissa Ruland, 85 kilos for her opening bench. Very easy opener there. What a dramatic day it's already been. Dana McNeil here, 92.5, in the same long arms that help her have a gigantic deadlift. Will in Peter in the bench. Now, because of that missed squat, she needs all of her bench presses. So that way she doesn't have to pull too much come deadlift time. Yeah, it's, it's by no means a write-off just because you have a big deadlift. For every kilo you bench press, you don't have to deadlift later. And she needs to stay within striking distance. She can't let Krennan get away from her. And that's a beautiful start. Because if we're honest, Michelle Robbins is close enough to Dana McNeil if Crennan gets away from Dana, she's not chasing gold, but defending silver. Spencer in the 84 pluses, 92.5. Michelle Robbins with a nominated 535. Dana, a nominated 542 and a half. That's a close one as well. Smooth opening bench. Lights, camera, have to go three white lights. Arnest Richard, Crannon, Warford. Crannon, Warford, 97.5. Hopefully, that second squat knocked out all of her nerves and we don't have a repeat of anything that happened during squat. I think that now she's kind of welcomed into the meet. She's welcomed into nationals. She got her wake-up call, and I hope that she's able to get all three of these bench presses. And uh, a degree of confidence has been gathered from that squat event where you got tested, but you passed the test. Yep. And I do like that they're not taking any chances. Get her on the board. Get that positive momentum going. They're going to get the most out of her. Aliza Tesler, 100 kilos even in the 84 kilo class. Opting for no handoff. And refresh my memory, do you get handoffs? Uh, I do. I definitely get a lift off. For me, my shoulders can't take it. I can't do what she just did. I can't, I can't do what she just did. Not at all. <laughs> she has no wrist wraps and keeps her watch on. No handoff. Joa Ayanota in the 76 kilo class. 105 kilos for opening bench.
Easy work of that. Claire's eye in the 76 is 110. Yeah. I would say, now what's interesting, honestly, within these 76s is just like in the 120s, it looks like we have a lifter with Michelle Robbins whenever she comes up that kind of makes her ground here on the bench press, and that's her secret weapon. So I'm really excited to see how this actually plays out throughout this bench press. She struggled in the squats, but has an opportunity to gain some ground in the bench press, and there's a lot of lifting left to go. Both Crennan and Dana, who are nominated ahead of her, left squats two for three, so they didn't have perfect squat events either. It's not over yet. Jessica Kinney, 112.5. And here is Michelle Robbins. Our is Michelle Robbins. This is 115 kilos. Bar is loaded for Michelle. That's a bit of a struggle for an opener. Michelle, who left squats with just her opener, is slow to leave the bench as well and looks a little bit uncertain of herself. Pat Johnson, 115. In the 84 pluses. So Michelle Robbins struggling on the bench press. Other than that, all the opening presses look as they should. And if Michelle continues to struggle, it really opens up and alleviates the pressure from behind on Dana to not have to defend her silver and just chase the gold, which makes it more difficult for Krennan, but possibly more entertaining for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany Savage, 127.5, 84 kilo lifter. Now, Tiffany's best bench is 135, and she's opening up at 127 and a half. So we already said that training is going well. And based on this opener, let's see how much that she actually put on her bench press. Well, it moved like an opener should. And with that, let's just see how much over her PR she goes. Melissa Copeland, 84 plus, 127.5. What do you think, Brendan? 
I'm thinking about two and a half, just because on the bench press, even though it may look good and look smooth, a lot less room for error. So just because of that little bit of a sticking point, I'll probably go two and a half. But who knows? Bonica Brown, 135. Bonica has hit 155 previously. There she is, telling the spotter exactly how she wants it. Because a good liftoff can make you, but a bad one can definitely break you. Yeah, we've seen that. You've heard in the captions, speaking of miss grooves, the handoff can contribute to that. That was easy. Looks like she communicated well. <laughs> Alexis Jones, 152.5, 20 kilos below her personal best. Let's see what kind of jump she takes because she didn't PR on squat, held back, and cruised through a three for three event. Bar is loaded for Alexis Jones. The world record is 164.5, just for reference. Now, obviously, you have to be at the international stage with international judging for that to be a world record. But it gives a nice comparison just how strong of a presser Alexis is. Could we see an unofficial world record here today? Let's see how this moves. that even with her being on cruise control i think that's within the target range i think even with her on cruise control she may just go for it and that would be huge to take her any kind of record on autopilot that's that's uh, <laughs> that's very well said marissa ruland 90 kilos for a second attempt yeah it really puts in perspective the special talent that alexis jones is And if this bench press event is even half as exciting as the squat event, we're gonna see some fireworks. Right up. Picks up five more kilos. <laughs> The way she got up off of that, I'm like, she is glad she waded through it. So I don't know if she even goes up two and a half or she skips it. Because um, sometimes on the bench press, it's really just about stacking the total. And then you just get the bigger push on your total come deadlift time. 97.5 being loaded for Dana McNeil. Seems to be a stitch of confusion who's up next. It looks like Dana is actually up. Did she want her wrist wraps? They were on the seat there. Now, the biggest thing is that she really collects herself and makes sure that she's fully prepared for this 97 and a half. Because remember, she is in a position where she cannot miss another lift. She already risked it on the last squat. Didn't go her way. So she needs to capitalize on this bench press. Um, what, did she have wrist wraps on her first attempt? It looks like it doesn't even matter. Yeah, and that actually was very smooth for a second attempt. She has a lot more in that bench press. And when you're a veteran like Dana, you can operate and execute under any situation. It was Meg Scanlon who had her back there. Yeah. Ran in there, oh Dana, I think that's you. <laughs> Spencer, 97 and a half for her second attempt. Now, that's one of the things as an athlete is whenever you're called to do what you're supposed to do, especially on a second attempt, you can go in there and just knock it out and do what you have to do to secure your total. It doesn't really matter. We just adapt. Rock solid, Teresa. 
Three white lights. And the ladies are hitting today Crannon Warford, 105, 231 pounds. She just looks way more poised coming out here on bench than she did on squat. You can really tell that she's letting the moment sink in. Crannon has previously benched 110. And after the bit of a scare in squats, I do like that they're letting her build some momentum in the bench. She was hitting PRs pretty early in squats. They're getting a little more patient with her in the bench press. Hold serve. She does have a big deadlift and she can defend if she needs to in the deadlift. Oh, a little sticking point right above lockout, but hits it. Yeah. The sticking point is never gonna be bad. You just can't go back down. That's right. But that never happened and she was able to stick straight through. Aliza Tesler, 110 kilos, 10 kilo jump. That's a sizable jump. Okay, two and a half kilos under her best. So let's see how this moves and see if she could get a PR on bench today. 100 kilos was fast, but 10 kilos, 22 pounds, will slow you down a little. Oh, moved appropriately. And that is a huge jump on the bench press. And for her to make it move like that, I would say she has another five to seven and a half in her. Yeah, I think so. I think five to seven and a half will see what they put in. Joa Ayanoda in the 76 is 112.5. Three for three lift. Claire Zai up next, 117.5 kilos, seven and a half kilo jump for her. And that's a decent jump in the bench press. Yeah, typically from opener to second attempt, um, especially with just like these weights that we're seeing and especially like with the women, you don't typically see these seven and a half, 10 kilo jumps from first to second. So I'm actually really excited to see this. Wow, and it's there. They likely just opened conservatively to make sure she hit. And some people like some wiggle room and conserve that energy for a big second and third. Probably a smaller jump to the third. Jessica Kinney, 117.5. Five kilo jump for her. Johnson up next with 120 kilos. This will match her personal best. And thus far, all of the ladies have hit, not a single miss. Five kilo jump handled well. Yeah, that was an easy second attempt. I would say throw on another five keys, call it a day, have your fun. 
Yeah, I think five kilos should be there. Tiffany Savage, 132.5. Tiffany looks all too ready. Was it be two and a half kilos under her best ever bench press. And honestly, based off her opener, I think she's gonna smoke this, and I think she'll be chipping her best on her third. But let's see what she does here. That was a good lift from Patricia Johnson. Tiffany Savage is the lifter, 292 pounds. Tiffany had a personal best squat. Possibly setting herself up for a personal best. Yeah, I would definitely be comfortable loading a personal best bench press. That was smooth and easy. Honestly, I think that was better than our opener. I'm not even going to lie. If you showed me that on video and said that was an opener, I'd believe you. 132.5 stays in the bar for Mel Copeland. And we thought 127.5 was a bit of work for an opener, but sometimes that's just how some lifters appear when they're lifting and some things can go wrong in the bench press. Small technical adjustments can make a bar move a lot smoother. Push it up, push it up. That was work as well. So she took a five kilo jump from her opener. I would say two and a half from there. Usually, when I say two and a half, I would have wanted to at least seen some type of like progression in the lift as the weight got heavier. I didn't really see that. So I honestly might skip. If she goes up two and a half and she gets it, that would be a beautiful grind. Bonica Brown, 145, 10 kilo jump for her. Jumping 22 pounds in the bench press is big, but she's hit 155 before. Now, one of the things that a lot of veterans do is they keep pace. So you like, may see them keep the same jump. So if this moves like a second attempt should, she may be on pace for her best at 155, just keeping that even 10 kilo jump. Wow, yeah. I think she's got another 10 kilos in her. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's on pace. And speaking of, I do believe that we may see a record break today. Jones. Alexis Jones, 160. The American record, 165. The world record, 164.5. And if she does what I believe Bonica is doing and keeping pace, that means she may take another seven and a half kilo jump or jump straight to the chip. But we yeah. gotta see how this moves. She'll probably collect the chip. I don't think she's gonna. it's going to come down to a difference of chips between her and Bonique, if I'm honest. But she might collect the chip regardless. <laughs> that was pretty easy. That was super easy. I think she should be confident loading up. The national record, which is, which is the unofficial world record as well. Ruland, 92.5. We thought this is probably the best move for her. Apparently her coaching staff agrees. I like it when we're all on the same page. <laughs> we're back in the 84s. That's a scrappy third attempt by Ruland. And in, sorry, go ahead, no. Brendan. I think that she got some help from the crowd. The crowd was asked to be loud, and I really do think that she called up on that as she grinded through that. So that was really beautiful. Spencer, 102.5. Bar is loaded for Teresa Spencer. 
if you are here for the university championships that will be held tomorrow. Equipment check for that will commence in about five minutes in the back. As we're on our third uh, and final round of benching. Some pivotal lifts left to come from Dana and Crennan. And a reminder, we will take no break and move directly into flight two with the 120, 120 plus men. Successful lift for her. Dana McNeil, 105. Bar is loaded for Dana. The wrist rush are on this time. So she hit 97 and a half without wrist wraps, which she ordinarily uses them, and that was smooth. I think 105 should be there, judging by how 97 and a half moved. No question on elbow oh, yeah. depth. Oh, yeah, come on, come on, come on. Oh, wow. Buster, come on, come on, come on. And no, nope, waves it off. That was a little surprising. 97 and a half was so smooth. And honestly, two for three in squats, two for three in bench. She's the underdog against Crennan. Kind of sort of needed those lifts, but she has a monster deadlift. And a monster deadlift sometimes can erase all those mistakes. But Crennan, these are five kilos. It's a personal best she's going to try to match here. Five pivotal kilos for her. And this is why attempt selection is so important in these battles, because one missed lift can just change your trajectory for the big lift that you do have and make it easy for the person who just collects the total. Wow, that was smooth and easy. Beautiful. What was that all about? She probably had more in the tank, but as she tells Joey, you know, we probably put, could have put it up, but if I'm honest, I think Joey made the right move there. She's got the lead. Dana's missing. She can only possibly miss and open the door for Dana. If she holds serve now and maintains her lead, she's in a, a key position. Yeah, one of those positions where she has everything to lose if she goes up and nothing to gain. So she might as well just play it safe, collect the easy dub on bench press, move on to deadlift, and get the easiest route to get her ticket to Lithuania. She doesn't need to, to do any risky maneuvers, mm -hmm. is, is exactly it. She got a PR squat, matched her PR bench press. She does even close to her PR on deadlifts. That should wrap it up. Yeah, and the thing is, even though Dana's out of the picture, you can't go trying to capitalize on Dana because you still have to beat Chloe. So there's still a total that you have to beat and you have a direct head-to-head -head matchup. So you really have no room to make any risky calls. Very classy move. 115 for Joa, who I think is gonna let the clock wind down. And then 115 will stay in the bar for Aliza Tesler. Yeah. Weights in the wings. Yeah, and you'll see that a lot here on bench press. There's a lot of people really maximize themselves on that second attempt, and then they skip the third so that we have a little bit more room for deadlift. So that doesn't shock me at all. Yeah, you can drain a lot, tighten up the lower back mm -hmm. while fighting for two and a half kilos, and you don't end up getting it. You got to be honest with yourself. But Elisa will come out for the 115, and 110 moved well. Yeah, this should be really easy. I mean, if she made the 110 move that fast after a 10 kilo jump, this five kilo should be nothing to her. Oh, and we oh. speak too soon. Spoke an, way too soon. An unexpected battle for Aliza. Now I will say, I think that was more of a mis-execution on her end, because she sunk that in way more than she did her second. And a little bit more sink, not holding onto that tension, will definitely mess you up with the bench press. Small, small margin for error there, so. Jessica Kinney, 76 kilo, class 120. Hey, 
off the chest. Yeah. But the brakes come on, on quick. Based off for a second, I would advise to skip just because of how rough that was. But I definitely don't knock her for going out there and trying to add on to her total. Um, because if there is a chance, sometimes you do want to add as much as you can. Claire's eye, 122.5. And while the ladies were flawless in the first and second rounds of bench, we are three for four and four in the third round of bench. More misses than hits. The ladies are extending themselves. Ooh, and another miss. And it's a rather high failure right now in the third round of benching. Whoever hits can really pull ahead. And that just speaks volumes to Krennan and the flex squad loading the proper weight so she could cruise through. I know Krennan looked back, man, like we should have went heavier, but if she looks at the rest of the field, you know what? This makes the difference. It's how titles are made. You hit PRs at local meets, but at nationals and worlds, you try to win. Yep. Here is about obtaining the goal, finishing the mission, getting the job done. It's not necessarily about creating the best highlight. And, and you know all about that when you knew 895 was the total you needed to get to the world championships. You loaded exactly what you needed for 895. That's right. I didn't want anything more, anything less, for sure. <laughs> That's for sure. Pat Johnson, 125. There we go. And she may have just broken our sea of red, and she did. So. Yeah, four misses in a row, and Pat Johnson gets us back on track. Mal Copeland now in the 84 plus is 135. And that was a five kilo PR for her. It was right on point with the selection. Mm -hmm. So she went up two and a half kilos. I think that's about the right call. Her second one was just as rough as her opener, but let's see how she can grind. Uneven? Was her down up? I'm not sure. Let's see what the call is. It was a great fight. Great fight. Beautiful grind. Just a little bit of up and down movement. Yeah, there was. If I'm honest, you can see that you're allowed for it to pause. You're allowed to come up uneven. But you can't have any down up motion. 137.5 by Tiffany Savage. And if she hits this, expect a celebration between her and Big Body on the side. Now, this is exactly what I expected of her. This is two and a half kilos over her best. Based on her progression, based on how she's been bench pressing, I really do think that she has this in her. And this doesn't shock me one bit. And is she intense when she hits the platform? All business. Does she have some horsepower? Perfect call. Wow, does she have some horsepower in this young lady? And she'll let you know it. Looking for Chris. <laughs> Bonica Brown, 150. Just did a 319 going up to 330. Five kilo jump, judging by how. 145 moves, she should have this. Yeah, and this is five kilos below her best, so this definitely should be in her wheelhouse. and squeezy and up next Alexis Jones with 166 and this is your national record and unofficial world record for Alexis in the final bench press in this flight we'll move directly into flight two with no break 
Now, like I said from the beginning, she has been on autopilot the whole time, and she is keeping on pace. We're about to see a record be broken while she is on cruise control. She's benched 172 and a half before. This should be within her means. She's already got a lead on subtotal over Bonica Brown. And with Alexis's deadlift, that's dangerous. <laughs> and there it is. Unofficial world record, official national record, Alexis Jones. And she is one session of lifting away from showing why she is just a separate animal altogether. Robert Lazarin, 175, we're in the 120 pluses now. Opening round of benching for flight two. Flight two, of course, we have the 120s in a battle between Bob Matthews and Big Dev, both of them going three for three in the squats. And the curiosity surrounding Ray Williams who squatted 460 and seems to be turning back the clock, or has he catched a second wind in his career? We'll find out. But first, 175 by Robert. That's a good over. Raise the bar 429 for Reagan Henderson. Reagan Henderson now, 195 for his opening bench. Reagan went three for three in the squad event, hitting a personal best. Pretty strong opener. His best is only 207.5, so I'm very interested to see the jumps that he makes. talking about and looking at is just how a lot of lifters in the gym, they deal with certain mats, so they have rugs and stuff like that to get their footing. It looks like he's having a little bit of issue with his footing on these illegal platforms and just trying to make sure that he's able to get himself in a good position. So there's are gonna be some adjustments that he's gonna to need to make. 200 kilos even for Mike T. Mike T has the Garys over his right shoulder. They've been in many battles together over the years. Nice opening bench by Mike. Three by Mike. The lift is good. Same weight. 440. Far Mike's happy with that. Tristan Up next, Nasal Tristan Nasalrod. Also 200 kilos open. Even, sorry. 120 plus. Tristan had a fantastic squat session as well, going three for three, hitting a personal best. Enjoying the gains as he moves up from the 120s. And that extra body weight will really help the squat and the bench press. And Tristan has a monstrous deadlift, but doesn't always help the deadlift. In fact, sometimes can impede it. We'll have to see where Tristan ends up there, but 200 kilos, pretty smooth. And sometimes, whenever you gain the weight, you can get so much on the squat and so much on the bench. Even if the deadlift dips a little bit, it's definitely worth it. Yeah. 
Yeah, the overall total moves up, and that's the name of the game. William O'Neill White, tool 7.5 for his opening bench. Bar is loaded for White. Makes easy work of that weight. Three white lights. William is on the board. Two twelve point five now. Big loader for Jonathan Avril. In the one twenty pluses. Bar is loaded. Easy work of that weight. That bar about jumped on Please load the bar up for Pablo Oliveras, 215 for his opening bench. And his opening bench is the best bench that he's ever done. Wow. You know what? Coming into the event, 380 was his best squat, and he needed, what was it? Let me double fact check myself here. He needed 390 to hit depth. I think his strength levels are just rising that quickly. We're gonna find out, but it's not often you see people open on their bench pair, especially in the bench, but Pablo's young, moving quickly in training. The progress has been fast. How fast, we're gonna find out. Can he threaten Ray Williams and a re-energized Ray Williams at that? If Pablo came in here, Thinking Ray was the injured Ray we had seen at previous nationals. Not the case. And that moved well for Pablo. He's got a lot more to tank. This is where that scouting really gets thrown out the window. Ray is supposed to not be as strong as he is now. And Pablo has progressed way beyond his previous numbers. 217.5. For the legend. Now, this is a very, very important bench press opener because we already saw that he's back alive on the squat. But if he's back alive on the bench, mm. <laughs> it's going to be a day. I got a feeling we're all going to be talking about Ray Williams on Monday. I don't even think it will take till Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well. Mm, that looks strong. Does he go up 10 kilos? I would say he does. I would say 10 kilos is there. It just really depends on if he's still feeling good, if he's not feeling hurt or anything like that. If he's feeling prime Ray, he definitely has 10 kilos. Bob Matthews opening with 220 kilos in the 120 kilo class. Bob has hit 240. Now the story with Bob, he had to make some adjustments coming to Powerlifting America, so he hits bench depth with his elbows. Now, under normal circumstances, this is super easy work for Bob, but we have to see if he hits depth. He does, <laughs> and that's smooth. I think all the questions have been answered. Yeah, I can easily see 10 kilo jumps right to that PR 240. I'd be very comfortable with a 10 kilo jump there. And I think it was a good idea by Marcellus to open relatively light. Right. Give yourself room for the 10 kilo jump. Don't take any risky attempt selections for an opener. When you're someone who has a monster total, keeping pace in the bench press is all you need to do. That is the game plan every single time it's nationals, worlds, or anything else. Lugo, 220 in the 120 pluses.
That was easy for him. And if he's anything like how he was on the squat, he should get better and better the more that he bench presses. Big Dev, 240 kilos. The world record is 253. Big Dev's personal best, 255.5. Now, his bench training has been going through the roof. He hit 584 in training. If that shows up today on this platform, Dallas is going to be a showcase. Both Bob and Devin capable of besting the world record total here. Oh, my goodness. Just 13 kilos away from the world record. They're going for the record on the second. They, yeah, they just might. Big Dev shrugs his shoulders. Easy work today. Robert Lazarin, 190, 15 kilo jump for him. Oh, Bob made a 20 kilo jump to 240 for a second. Oh, wow. 20 kilo jump on Bob. Bench press is unheard of. But if there's anyone who can do it, that is, I'm, that's a, that's a risky maneuver because if you miss, if that, there's anyone who can <laughs> do it, oh my goodness, it's Bob Matthews, and that's the reason why people came into this audience to, to watch that. Brendan, people say the bench press event is where the lull in action takes place. Not going to be the case in this flight. <laughs> Honestly, the bench press event is the highlight for the 120s. <laughs> wow, is that a monster jump. I can only imagine what Matt Gary's going to think when he reviews that on bench. Reagan, 202.5 in the 120s. This should be easy work for Reagan. Speaking of jumps... Devin definitely took that jump to the record on the second. Can't wait to see it. Yeah, the second round of benching is going to be interesting, <laughs> sir. There you oh, go. bit of a fight at the top. I think proceed ca with caution for the third. Yeah. I, would, I would go two and a half unless he knows himself better and goes five. But I would go two and a half because it would be good for him to capitalize on building a total. I wouldn't skip here. And then get that two and a half, deadlift something good, get a personal best total. 207.5 from Mike T. We'll stay in the 120s. Mike is pressed 217.5. Oh. You know what? That was work. I think maybe 210 at most. 210 at most, knowing Mike, if that was as rough as it looks like, he may just skip. Yeah, depending on how that how his body feels, no sense re-injuring or re-aggravating any injuries for two and a half kilos. Tristan Nasalrod, 207.5. Yeah, he is too big of a deadlift to try and risk anything on a third attempt bench press. Not for two and a half kilos. Seven and a half kilo jump for Tristan. In stark contrast, that was smooth and could have been an opener. Raise the bar to 485. Our next lifter is Jonathan. Jonathan, 220 for his second attempt. 220 kilos. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Tristan goes on to try and match his best today. His best being 220, and yeah, the way 207.5 moved, it looks like he's still in first gear. He's got more in him. Ooh, 
Jonathan's going for two and a half kilos under his best, trying to test the waters early. Oh, wow. Yeah, again, that probably could have been an opener. Yeah, those are the signs of progression. Now, he held up the five. I wonder if he's saying go up five more kilos or go to 500. It's a good question. <laughs> I'd be comfortable with the 500, actually. I would be comfortable with the 500. The way think, that moved? Yeah, I think it's the 500. William O'Neill White, and that's a big mark for the bench press to enter the 500-pound club. 20 for William. Yeah. Oh, some sticking point at the top. You see, it should be good though. Okay. Not sure what happened there. He looks a little bit stressed as well as he leads the platform. He has hit 227 and a half, but I don't think it's going to be there on this day. And Ray Williams, 227.5. Well, that answers the question if Ray feels good or not. He went up the 10 keys. We are at the 500 pound bench press marker. If he makes this fly, yeah, he's squatting over 1,000, potentially benching over 500. The storyline's building. Yeah. Ray Williams proving to the world there's a lot left more in the tank. Oh, oh, oh. He could probably go up another 10 kilos. He can go up another 10. I, I would be very shocked Three if they don't go up another 10 kilos. Weight, and again, his personal best, 247.5. He's not quite at his personal best squat and bench, but we're getting relatively close. A lot closer than anybody thought. And the main thing is he just has to be in range because he does have a big deadlift on him if he's in his prime. And when you have a big deadlift, your ranges can really jump from being at your best or being 30 pounds beyond just because that pressure is on you and you have something to achieve. So you never know. Pablo Olivares, 227.5 stays on the bar for him, 501 pounds. Now, this is huge for Pablo to stay in the race with Ray. Uh-oh. Uh, He'll have another go of it. 2.15 was so fast and smooth. It was fast, but I did see on his opener, it was just a little bit of slippage, just a little bit of him losing his grip towards lockout. And a lot of times on bench press, people either have a sticking point at the bottom or they have a sticking point at the top. And I think his sticking point showed early. Lugo, 2.30. Brennan Lugo has hit 235 previously. You know, are we looking at a personal best, maybe 237 and a half? He's going 237 and a half for sure because that looked better than his opener. And I already know, based off his squat, based what I'm seeing on bench, every single time the bar gets loaded up more, he becomes a better lifter every single time. Isn't it bizarre? But it did look better in his opener. Every single time. There are lifters like that. Now, Bob Matthews, an unheard of 20 kilo jump on bench press. This is going to feel all types of different than his opener. To see this in training is one thing, but officially on the platform is just nuts. At a national championships while in a showdown. And if there's anyone who <laughs> could do it, <laughs> if there's anyone who could do it, it's Bob Matthews. Listen, have fun now because that is not going to happen at Worlds no. if you get there. <laughs> You're not going to convince the coaching staff. I got an idea. It's, un it's unconventional, but hear me out. That's going to be a tough sell. Devin Williams, big dev, 254.5.
This is a national record, an unofficial world record. Big Dev is a world-class athlete, three for three in the squat event, and putting on quite a show on the bench, if you can hit this. Now, this is huge for Dev, because now it should move well, but this still is a lighter weight class for him. He actually did have to cut down into this meet, unlike Bob. So for his bench press to show up today, and for him to get this record right here is huge. Oh, wow. Amazing. That, that move like a second attempt should. Amazing. And he has oh, run the spirit. The, and you know what? Expression on his face was, ah, whatever. Yeah. Take I, it or leave it. I, I would say like seven and a half. I, I think that it was tough, but it was definitely to where like he has room left in the tank and he could definitely really capitalize on this moment. And he really only needs 260-ish to really stay in contention with Bob. Be interesting to see what he puts in. Both him and Bob are Bob not missing. Bobby. The battle remains tight. Robert Lazarin, 200 kilos even in the 120 pluses. This would be a personal best if he could enter into the 200 kilo club. Oh, yeah. Solid third attempt into the 200 kilo club. He's happy with it. Coach is happy with it. It's a good, good three for three bench session. Regan Henderson, 207.5. This right here matches his best ever bench press. And this will be huge for him because this will make him six for six on the national stage. And being a rookie going nine for nine on the national stage is huge. Collecting some valuable experience. Come on, push, 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 push. Ah. Nice catch, but a little too much. He thanks the spotters. Thank you, fellas. He says, he knows. He knows we're wrong. He was having issues with the carpet earlier. Just something they're going to adjust in training, and he'll come back stronger next time. Mike T, 210 kilos even. I think two and a half kilo jump probably is all that would be on the table. 207.5 was tough. I'm not going to lie, this shocks me, but if Mike T loaded it up, that means he knows he has it. Yeah, he's got a sizable lead over Reagan for the podium. I don't think he's overly threatened. But Mike wants to use up all of his attempts. Sometimes you just love lifting. So you go out there and you do it regardless. Sometimes it really is just about giving all you got. Just like Gavin Eddy would say, what is it, burn your ships? Don't leave anything else out there. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Tristan Nasalrod, 215. And Tristan in the projected, Nano 2.5. Lugo in the projected, 9.10. This is a very important seven and a half kilos for Tristan because his arch rival Lugo is very close. And that was a very conservative third. Yeah, Tristan has previously hit 2.20. And that means he's playing chess for sure, because I feel like 220 was there, but maybe it is risky. And he knows that in deadlift is where he could get that advantage over Lugo. This is going to be a tight battle. And William O'Neill bet white 225. Now, when he walked away from his second, he looked, uh, you know, like he just got hit upside the head. 
So hopefully he can come back, wake up on this third, and he gets the energy that he was looking for. Oh, can the left. Nope. A stubborn left Man, arm would not lock out for him. Give it up for those guys. 220 was tough. And Pablo Olivares missed 227 and a half, 501 on his second. Coming back on his third. Now, I know I said earlier with Pablo that it looked like his sticking point is at the top. However, the Olivares brothers do a sinking method when it comes to the bench press. And sometimes when you're sinking, you have a certain misgroup, it can create that sticking point. So I'm very interested to see if they make that correction, make that adaptation, if he can showcase his force as an athlete and overcome this adversity. He definitely looks a whole lot more keyed up for this one. A lot more intense and that can go a long way. Does anybody think Pablo can come back and get this 501? Greats, come on. Uh, just wasn't there. Hey, let's give it up for Pablo. Just not today. Pablo, two for three in squats, one for three in bench, has an opportunity to gain some ground in the deadlifts. But on a day where Ray Williams is rejuvenated, Looks like catching up to him won't be in the cards. Jonathan Avril, 230 in the 120 pluses. on the third attempt. Seven and a half kilos over his best ever bench press and it still looked like a second attempt. Mad progression for Jonathan. We thought 10 kilos for Ray Williams. Matt Gary, Susie Gary also thought 10 kilos. 227.5 suggested this should be there. I honestly would be very shocked if he missed this because he just looks like he's in his zone. This is the most locked in I've seen Ray Williams in a pretty long time. And as soon as he hits his first deadlift, he's already at 1,012.5 kilo total. This is the best Ray Williams we've seen in a while. Oh, great catch. Great catch. That was fast. It looked like he was going to get it. I think he's shocked that he didn't get it as well. Yeah, he was explaining what he thought happened. I think it was a misgroove. Yeah. And like, was, I was saying, well, like I was saying with Pablo earlier, when you sink it, it, it is a hit or miss. And sometimes you get that wrong misgroove and it leads to you know missing the lift, even though the strength is there. Um, it just sucks that that happened to be on his third. Enrique Lugo, 240 kilos. And then this should be a personal best for him and it is by five kilos. And based off his second, and based off the lifter that he is, this should move very well. He's in a very tight race with Tristan Nasalrod. These are 10 kilos he could use. Yeah, I mean, as the weight gets heavier, it just, its form tightens up. Yeah. And he is on point today. It's almost like with each attempt, he's just loading and loading and loading. And then on the third attempt, he just unleashes all of his strength. Bob Matthews, 245. Initially, when Bob Matthews announced he'll be lifting at Powerlifting American Nationals, appeared as though this might be a runaway favorite. Not the case as Big Dev joined him in the roster, and we have a head-to-head -head showdown, and Bob is being pushed. And when you push a talented guy like Bob, you get some special outcomes. 245. My goodness. Oh, ah. And we have our first miss. That's the first miss between Bob and Big Dev. It's only five kilos. I say, luckily, 
luckily it's only five kilos. He did secure the 240. Bob does have the bigger deadlift. So it's still in Bob's hand and it's in his favor. But if Devin gets this third bench press, Bob cannot afford another missed lift. Big Dev is in position now. He can grab six more kilos. He's keeping the chip and really apply pressure on the favorite Bob Matthews. He would love to spoil Bob's party and grab that Team USA spot. You gotta love when you have the chips because normal people would have to take a seven and a half kilo jump, but he can make the smarter call making the six kilo jump because he owns the record. And Big Dev hits, and he hits hard yep. in the bench press event. The battle continues. That's exactly what he needed. The American record is his again. <laughs> and that is a huge bench press on the national platform. Wow. What a great battle in this flight. And what a great way to end the bench press session. We're going to take a short 10 minute break. Do not go anywhere because we will return with the deadlift session and the conclusion of the Powerlifting America Day 3 Nationals.
and welcome back to Powerlifting America's 2024 National Championships. Day three, where we have the 76, 84, 84 plus women's divisions and the 120 and 120 plus men's. I am six pack Lapidat, accompanied in the booth by none other than the 93 kilo American champion, Brendan Petrie and Brendan, we've already seen some fireworks Big Ray had some big squats. Big Dev and Bob Matthews toe to toe in the squat and bench press event. Neck and neck going into the deadlifts. Crennan had some early adversity and had to right the ship in the bench press. It's been exciting. Can't wait to see how this all unfolds in the deadlifts. And Marissa Ruland, 167.5. Please load the bar to 380 pounds. And that lift is good. Is Teresa Spencer. Bar is loaded for Teresa. Spencer, 172.5. Our next weight, 385 pounds. Our lifter is John Arnona. This is 175 kilos. And looking Our at the forecast projected between Bob Matthews and Devin Williams, Brendan, 0 0.5 kilos separates them. We thought it was going to be tight. And honestly, this is why forecasted totals are so interesting, right? Because it's only based off that deadlift opener. And there's two different styles of deadlifters that we have right here. We have Bob, who takes dangerous <laughs> jumps, as we saw on bench press. So that forecasted total, as tight as it is, I think by second attempts, we're going to start seeing some separation. But Bob has to get his second, or else Dev's going to come through, and he may just rob him of a ticket to Lithuania. Joa, successful 175 in her opener. Aliza, 182.5 for her opener. And you're right, sir. Devin opening heavier. Bob likely to take some big jumps, like you said. Yep. He's a gunslinger out there. This is, this is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> no one is safe. No, that's for sure. Aliza solidifies her total. And even Cranon coming in, if she gets her opening deadlift here, it would be 540. Now, she needs to get her second and needs to get her third in order to beat what Chloe did earlier. Just because she gets her opener does not mean that she necessarily has to take it in the bag. She has to execute. We saw that some nerves happened on squat. So she not only has to be strong, but she has to lift to a standard because that's what separates people from being strong locally to being strong and going to Worlds. That's true, Jessica Kinney, 200 kilos even. Yeah, 540, 548.5 is what Chloe hit, so she's gonna have to get at least that on her second, and if she misses it on her second, can retake it on her third, and then has to keep an eye also on Dana. Dana's got a monster deadlift. Bar is loaded. Melissa Copeland, 200 kilos even for her opening pull. lights for her and you know what Chloe Dublin lifted earlier I haven't even checked to see if she's in the crowd I wonder if I was her I would definitely be in the crowd <laughs> yeah, at the edge <laughs> look for the lady at the edge of her seat 
Claire Zai, 202.5. You know, it's funny. She may not be in the crowd, but she may be in the back room, actually, because her husband is coaching Alexis Jones. That's right. So who knows when they ask all the athletes to walk out. Oh, that's a little Ooh. unexpected. The right knee was, yeah, left knee, so sorry, was shaking. Unable to lock that out. Take a look at this replay. Very much, very shaky and lost her balance. And she was upset as she unclasped the belt and storms off. She'll have two more attempts, though. And this is why weird things happen with sumo. Mm -hmm. This is why it's nice to take two shots at something when it means a lot to you, like your final pull. Exactly. It's just because with sumo, you never really know how the lift's going to go until you do it. And that's why nothing is really ever secured. So it's best to give yourself as many opportunities as possible to get the job done. Tiffany Savage, 210. Tiffany having an all-time best day. And that should lock in the 84 kilo national title for her. And she has more in the tank. And with her best being 227 and a half, I think with the way that she makes jumps, she's on pace to definitely beat this PR as well. And she would have PR'd on every single event closing out this meet. She has two more lifts to get it done. That's how you put an exclamation mark on your nationals appearance. Michelle Robbins, 215, up next. Not sure I see Michelle back there, though. Joey Flex looking for Michelle as well. Where is Michelle Robbins? It'd be unfortunate if she misses her opening pull. Good thing, though, this is deadlift. It is the fastest of the three events. So even if she gets out there with 10 seconds left, she may be able to get it in before timing out. Yeah, oh. Looks like Michelle's going to time out. That's unexpected. Well, but she, she did walk away from the last bench a little shaken, so maybe it ended up costing her more than we thought. 217.5 will be loaded for Crennan. That'll bring her total to 540. Crennan got tested early in the squats, cruised through the bench press, and looks on pace. Barring any disasters. Now, her best deadlift is 234. So if she smokes this opener as she should, she should be able to go seven and a half kilos up from there, um, or really 10 kilos up from there, get the 501 deadlift, secure beating Chloe, and then just worry about what Dana can pull. Judging how this moves, I think moving up 10 kilos might be there to secure it, and then she has another go at it. Mm -hmm. It's still under her best, so it should be there. And judging by her training, she should have more in the tank than her previous best. But let's see how this moves. Okay. Oh yeah. I think oh. 10 kilos is there. If they want to secure beating Chloe Dublin. It's, it's sumo, so. I would jump 10 kilos, secure it beating Chloe at least, give yourself another try if there's some mishap, a bobble, you know, misgroove off the floor, something. You want to make sure that you can make that correction so you can seal the deal and get your ticket. Look, we've seen it already in the squash. She said the nerves got the better of her for a second attempt, calmed down, got into a third. It might happen again. I think you're right. I think that would be the appropriate move here. Bonica Brown, 220. Easy. And Solidifies her total. Very smooth, very smooth. Pat Johnson, 220 stays on, the, stays on the bar for her in the 84 plus.
Very smooth pull for Patricia. And to go left. Raise the bar to 496. Now, Dana McNeil with 225. Our next lifter is Dana If she hits McNeil. this and it moves smooth, it's conceivable she could load up enough to beat Chloe Dublin's 548.5 by her third Chloe. attempt she and force Crennan to have to make, to beat her out and make her third attempt. And it, this is where really stacking the total matters, right? Because let's say that went a little bit more conservative on the squat, a little bit more conservative on the bench. She really wouldn't have to exceed her personal best too much on that third. But now, let's see how much of a weapon she can unlock on these deadlifts to secure her ticket to Lithuania. She can't miss anymore. She's been missing her thirds today. She can't afford to miss a third on the deadlifts. Alexis Jones, 232.5 in the 84 plus. Now, I was watching her when I went back there in the warm-up room, and everything looked like it was very automatic. So I, I expect to see another professional performance here by Alexis, just going up to the bar, being on cruise control, and getting the dub that she's been wanting ever since she got into the sport. Wow. And that took very little effort from Alexis. She made quick work of that. Zero expression on the face. Yeah. Spencer will take 180 for a second attempt. Bar is loaded. We will present awards right after the deadlift. Stay tuned. Ruland, 182.5. Three, three white lights. lights for her. Let's raise the bar to 407 pounds. Joa Ayanoda, 185, 10 kilo jump for her. We are ready for Joa, 407 Aliza Tesla, 195 kilos for her second attempt. This is a sizable 12 and a half kilo jump from her opener. Yeah, also had a few words with her in the back and she was saying that she just wants to finish out the meet being strong and getting all of her lifts. She's tired of getting a miss here, a miss there. She just wants deadlifts to be three solid good attempts. Well, she's got her total secured. Now it's all about adding some kilos onto that total. That was a solid 195 for her. One lift away from getting the job done. Previously, she's pulled 202.5. Melissa Copeland, 210. 10 kilo jump. Bar is A 
little bit of a struggle at lockout, but she gets there. Let's see what the judges say. Two to one. And Claire's eye struggled with 202.5. The knees were rattling, had some issues at that lockout. Whoa, wow, jumped up 10 kilos regardless. So, Yikes. When I was watching her opener, I, I wanted to see if she would go up or not because sometimes in sumo, the weight can be so light that you try to make sure you don't overdo it, and then it makes it to where the lockout is weird. So if you go up, make it heavy enough, but the contention kilos. is sometimes this is what is need. That's what you need. Let's see what happens. My goodness, that was a... Gutsy move. I think she's done it. Yeah. I, I think that seven and a half would have been enough to get enough weight on there to fix <laughs> Just, it. <laughs> my friend, my friend, I, I, I'm glad it all worked out, but so that, was, that was that was <laughs> gutsy. So, so I'm, a, I'm a fan of going up. Ten kilos I wasn't expecting. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be reasonable. Let's negotiate. <laughs> Jessica Kinney, 220 kilos, 20 kilo jump from her opener. Oh, that's wow. a huge jump. People are just coming out swinging in this second round, sir. Yeah. You know, I, I'm actually a personal fan of the big jumps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, as, as a viewer and commentator, it's exciting. I'm more of a fan when it's successful. That's right. And, yeah, she knows what she's doing. Locks it up. And sometimes for deadlifts. Now, for her, in her case, she had her total secure. <coughs> sometimes for deadlifts, you know you only have one or two big pulls, so you take big jumps. And I am used to seeing big jumps. Usually you got your total secured before you do it. Tiffany Savage, 222.5, 12 and a half kilo jump from her opener. And this will be five kilos under her best. And I think that they're just going with the plan of getting a little close to the PR on the second and then chipping it or beating it by five kilos on the third. Um, and I think that's been working out great for them today. Yeah, after this, she's only two and a half kilos from her previous total PR and she'll still have another deadlift to go. a little bit more work. It's definitely more work. I will say that I think that five more kilos is there to I where would, she can match. I would say five more kilos to match the deadlift PR, but get a total PR. Right. Overall progress on the day in Crennan, 230. This will give her a 552.5 kilo total, which will surpass Chloe and greatly push back the charge of Dana, but Dana won't be out yet. She's a huge deadlifter. But it'll definitely create some space. Now this is huge. This is yeah. a huge deadlift for her. This is the moment that she can punch her ticket. Crennan has pulled 234 before. It's within her means. It can close the door on Chloe. But it, even if there is a misgroove or a mishap, she at least has one more chance to get it done. That's right. Of course, Dana will rally. Well, and that so, was, yeah, that and was sometimes easy. you just get it done on the second yeah. and try not to worry about it too much. That'll close the door on Chloe. And now she's got to keep an eye on Dana and see what she does. Waiting on the lights here to confirm what I think we already know, and that is a good lift. And she has room, if we're honest. A lot of room, if we're honest. She's going to have to pull before Dana. Dana will have the last say, but let's see how Dana's second attempt moves, because Dana has so much ground she still has to cover. After Dana hits her second attempt, she'll be at 535, and that's a big ask. Bonica Brown. Handles 230. Nice move for Bonica. Perfect attempt, three white lines. 
Pat Johnson, 232.5 in the 84 plus. Bar is loaded for Patricia. Honestly, that looked a little bit better than our opener, and she feels it. Let's go, Dr. Pat. Take it up to 534 for Dana McNeil. Far is loaded. Dana is a 76 kilo lifter. Now, this right here is a pretty big jump. And I don't know if she's flying too close to the sun, as you would say, because this is two and a half kilos off of her best. But if she's holding pace, this could be dangerous. And that was smooth. All right, now listen. She needs, I believe, if my calculations are right, 20 kilos to best what Crennan has now and forces Crennan to hit her third. And that's pretty much, I think 20 kilos will be the top. I mean, that's the monster deadlift. And after seeing her almost make a 20 kilo jump right there and the way that second moved, I wouldn't be shocked that they're on 20 kilos. It might be around there and it might force Crennan's hand. Crennan, who isn't used to this type of level of lifting, nationals, the pressure. You want to pressure these younger lifters. That's right. Alexis Jones, 247.5. Now with this, Alexis Jones for sure has punched her ticket to Lithuania. Um, and she's just on cruise control the entire time. It, it, it is, it's amazing. No expression. She knows that she was going to come here, get the job done, punch her ticket. She's not even shocked in the least. Marissa Rulin, 187.5. We're at the third and final round of deadlifts. And Crennan has 250 for her final pull, but you could change your final pull twice. However, she is going to pull before Dana. So they're, if they're going to change, they have to make their decision, and they're not going to get any more information out of Dana before they make that decision. So they're somewhat flying in the dark here. It's 250 too much, though, because if she misses her, if Crennan misses her third, Dana now knows. I, I know I just need to beat 552.5 and load up 20 more kilos. I think they need to force Dana's hand. Do they need to jump 20 kilos from 230 to 250? I don't know. 230 move fast. Did it move that fast? Brennan, I'm glad I'm not anybody's coach right now. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> it's easier doing my job right now. Because right now, Dana just put in 257 and a half. And if she legit can at least even pull 252 and a half and 257 and a half is a placeholder, but they're confident in 252, then Crannon has one deadlift left to actually get the job done. And with all that pressure and all those nerves, can she do it? Can she step up to the plate? Spencer, 187.5 is good two to one in the 76 kilo class. Yeah, Dana's gonna sit back and see if Crennan hits her final pull. With the way that second move, I, I really wouldn't be shocked with 252 and a half. Right now, Dana's in third and could be pulling herself into second, though. Mm. That's right, because she needed 20 kilos. 195 for Ayanoda in the 76 kilo class. It almost makes me wonder, with the 257 and a half, not going the extra two and a half kilos up, is this just a game? Or is she really just settling for second place and making sure that she doesn't get third? Yeah, I, I, it, I'm not sure at this point. We're gonna have to see Alexis Jones, 272.5, loaded for her. That is, I'm assuming, I don't think she's coming out to that. That's 601 pounds and the biggest a monstrous jump. 
Aliza Tesler. No, that's 272.5 is that's Alexis Jones. Is, yeah, not until the end of this. It just popped <laughs> up on the screen. That is a monstrous jump by Alexis Jones. Maybe she does come out to it. A 600-pound deadlift. Wow. Uh, she comes out to that. Yeah, I think she, she will, actually. She's coming out to that. What a way to end the day. All right. We have Eliza Tesler. Uh, she's coming out here just trying to make sure that she gets her last and final deadlift. She wanted to make sure that she doesn't fail another lift. Let's see if she gets the job done. A personal best. What a scrappy oh. third and final. Is it good? It's good to the one. <laughs> <laughs> what a scrappy final pull. And Arian escorts her off the platform before she loses that. Exactly. He's like, all right, walk away now. Oh, walk Let's. Away. <laughs> you have the two by lights to secure. Walk away, walk away. Mel Copeland, 212.5. See what the judges say. Oh, oh. They didn't quite get the shoulders back there. It seemed like, and there may have been some downward movement. But it is two different calls that could go to the jury and contest it. Claire's eye, 220. Took two swings at 212.5. Whoa, Ooh. it's a big effort. Hey, let's give Claire's eye enough round of applause. Taking up to 501 for Jessica Kinney. Jessica is now, this would be a two and a half kilo PR for Jessica, who made the 20 kilo jump from her opener to second. So, seven and a half kilo jump really shouldn't be much for her, especially if she's already hit 225. But let's see what she has in her today. Yeah, comparatively, seven and a half kilos is going to feel like no difference at all. Bar is loaded for Jessica Kim. And she's already getting emotional. There you go, there you go. Fight. <laughs> well done. A scrappy third and final attempt for Jessica, Jessica Kinney. Coming out here and getting a PR on the national platform is one of the hardest things you could possibly do. This feels better than getting a PR any time in the gym. So I can actually relate with the emotion that she's sharing right there. And Tiffany Savage looks all types of ready for that 227.5. 500 pounds, 501 to be exact, loaded. And it looks like we called it. She jumped five, matched her best Della PR, but she's going to secure the PR total if she gets this lift. I think this is the right call to make. And she <laughs> is fired up. If the crowd was asleep, they're awake now. about fight at the top. Perfect nine for nine day. 
Hey. 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 Wow. <laughs> you think I was rehearsing? <laughs> you knew. And Crennan, 237.5 loaded. I think this is the right call. They changed this final deadlift from 250. That was a placeholder. That makes a whole lot more sense. I think this is a good idea here. This will close the door. And it doesn't look like Dana's making any moves. I think Dana is just trying to secure a second, trying to beat Chloe's total, get that second place on the national stage. Honestly, I think they scared Dana off. It was nice handling by Team Flex on this one. And this should be within her means, 237.5. To finish off the day with a nice 560. And this is a big PR for a PR total and PR deadlift. And that should just about do it. Yeah. Crennan, 76 kilo US champion, barring any kind of last minute dramatics from Dana, punching her ticket to Lithuania. Our lifter is Bonica Brown. It was an exciting PA debut. Far is and low. Bonica Brown, 237.5 as well. Love to see it. Overcame adversity on the second squat and didn't look back ever again. That's right. The true testament of an athlete. It's not a bad thing for a young athlete to get tested. Nice final pull by Monika. Monika Brown just went eight for nine. Pat Johnson up next with 240 kilos. And a quick reminder, after this flight is done, we move into the next flight of the 120, 120 pluses with no break. There are definitely a lot of new faces on Team USA this year. Yeah, there is, and that's not a bad thing. Not a bad You're thing. You're among them, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Get some new blood in there. Patricia Johnson is trying to go. A lot of posters are going to look way different in 2024 and 2025. Pat Johnson, seven and a half kilo jump for her. There we go, there we go. Too much on the day. Patricia Johnson. Great fight all the way to the very end. Loaded up to 567. 257 for and a half for Dana McNeil. Finishing the day with 550 kilos even. She will nudge past Chloe Dublin. This is a huge deadlift. But Dana is capable. And this is it. She may not be facing Chloe in the flight itself, but that total is still holding strong. And she needs this. She needs this. All right, this is for second place. Let's hear it for Dana. Just don't stop. But, uh, Give her a nice round of applause. Great fight to the very end. Yeah, she, she was a needed person on this battle to apply pressure to Cranon. Chloe did her part as well. It made it interesting. Right to the end, Alexis Jones, 272.5, 601 pounds. Now, I wonder if I finally get a chance to see her expression change after this final yeah. pool. <laughs> yeah, she is legitimately like the Terminator walking out there. She's coming to complete her mission. You can't negotiate with her. You can't reason with her. All she sees is her mission in front of her. She's cruising the 698.5. 
Oh, wow. Finally see some effort, and that was a nice final 601 pound pull oh, by a oh. Oh. Let's take a look at this. Did they think that was ramping? Well, she still won by a country mile and punched her ticket to Team USA and heading to Lithuania as we move directly into the second flight, 120, 120 pluses, and 310 kilos being loaded for Robert Lazarin. I had a chance to bump into Devin back in the warm-up room. He told me, look it, I came here to press Bob, put on a show. I said, my friend, you've already done that. Having a bit of a discussion here. Off on the side. I'm not sure what the holdup is. Give us a chance to give a shout out to our sponsors, SBD and Alico. Well, I, I, I see Shane up there, so they're possibly trying to get that last ah, pull over. The overturned. Alexis deadlift. Exactly. Because it was close. All right. Did they say bar is loaded for Robert? Alexis Jones 600 was just overturned. Oh wow, Alexis Jones 600 has been overturned and ruled a good lift. And if I'm honest, I thought so as well. Yeah, I was looking at it and I was like, that is close. I was like, I would go up to the jury. And I saw Shane up there and I'm just like, yeah, let's just wait, see what happens. And they did it. If they thought there was ramping, I didn't see ramping. I didn't see soft knees. Sometimes the death is just tough. It just takes a little while. So 698.5 for Alexis Jones winning the title. Bonico obviously coming in second. Robert Lazarin. Very easy opener there. Same way for Pablo Oliveris. Pablo Oliveris taking the same weight for his opening pull. Easy work of 310. Very fast. Anthony's going for Pablo. Please load the bar to 694. Our next lifter. Ray, Ray Williams Ray now, 315 kilos. That'll put him at 1,002.5. ,002 With his opening pull, oh, already over 1,000 kilos. This, this will be our first thousand kilo total of the day. Is it going to be our last? Slow on the descent. And to go left, three wide lines. Same way for Jonathan Gavril. Excuse me. Jonathan, 315 stays on the bar for him and we stay in the 120 kilo 120 plus kilo class and the left is good 
Very easy work there. Love seeing opening deadlifts move as they should. No struggles, no sticking points, no mishaps. Let's try and keep this going. William O'Neill White, 317.5. Getting close to conclusion of some tight battles between Tristan Nasalrod and Lugo. We'll get to see the answer how far Ray can push his total. And of course, the battle between Big Dev and Bob Matthews. And speaking of Nasalrod, here he is. And he is a bull ready to get let loose out of his pen. 322.5. And Tristan has a huge deadlift on him. A lot more in the tank where that came from. Three white plates. Please load the bar to 716 for Enrique Lugo. Enrique Lugo up next, 325. Enrique jogging out there. Hopefully he doesn't forget to take his iPods out. We are ready for Enrique. Hopefully so. Yep, there, there we, we are. Go. Yeah, with the deadlift, you have a lot of time. So there's no really there's no really no need to rush out there. You have a full 60 seconds. Like, it takes you two seconds to get your opener up. Yeah, especially with those openers. Maybe for him, three. But he gets better with each one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're right. If it looked like a little bit of work, don't worry. On his second and thirds, they get smoother and smoother, apparently. Reagan, 332.5 for his opening pull. And Bob Matthews changed his opener. Previously, he was opening before Devin. Now he's going to open after Devin. And that means they're trying to secure something early. And, and they'll also be able to see where Devin's at when they start making their decisions for second and third pulls. It's an advantageous position to be in. Nice opening pull by Reagan. Devin, 340. Now that is interesting. He barely has any chalk on his hand. I was about to say he applied it so liberally, or conservatively, I should say. Opening deadlift does mean a lot. Yeah, he's got a lot in the tank there. Very smooth. I guess he doesn't need the chalk after all. <laughs> <laughs> Mike T, 345 in the 120 kilo class. Mike pacing for that podium. It's been an interesting 120 kilo class so far. Now with this opening deal, if he should have third place pretty much on lock, it would have to be a crazy, crazy um, unfortunate series of events for Devin and Bob for Mike to pass him up. No, that would be, yeah, that would be a too big of an ask. Mike securing a platform finish is the goal and adding on to his total. Possibly breaking into the 900s. And Bob Matthews, 345 
This will give him a 945 kilo total. Devin, already at 935.5. They're within 10 kilos of each other, and that means they're within one missed lift of each other. Temp selection is gonna be key for these gentlemen. It's really gonna be how big of a jump does Bob go after this? I mean, it, it's hard to call. It's well. Oh, that was so fast. It, he's been a little erratic today with a 20 kilo jump on bench press. I don't know if you make a crazy jump on your second deadlift and you miss. My goodness. I don't see him doing anything under 22 and a half. Things change with 22 and a half kilos loaded. Let's see, this is an interesting day. Robert Lazarin, 327.5. Dev has already gone up 20 kilos and Robert makes easy work a 327 and a half. Well, knowing Bob, he decided to go 378.5, making a 33 and a half kilo jump from his opener, just in Bob fashion. 378.5, coming into the competition, Bob's best is 385. Now he's hit that before, but it's getting relatively close to the top end. He should be able to hit that. I'm assuming he's stronger than he was before. And it is conventional, so it's a little bit more predictable that you usually don't really have to worry about some type of weird misgroove like Sumo is. 330 for William O'Neill White. After the second round of pulls, Devin and Bob, who are within 10 kilos, the spread will increase if they're both successful. Devin will be at 955.5. Bob will be at 978.5. Devin taking a more conservative 20 kilo jump. Let's see how it all unfolds. Pablo Olivares, Pabs, 330, 310. Very quick off the floor. He should handle these 20 kilos fine. And he does a lot more in the tank. Obliterate it. 330. He should definitely surpass his best of 340 on the next one. Ray Williams, 335 kilos. This will put him at 1,022.5 kilo total. He's gonna finish shy of the mark of Jesus Oliveras at Sheffield, but he is gonna finish as high as we've seen him in quite some time. You know, overall, even when this is all said and done, this was great momentum for Ray, and this shows that the Ray Williams, Jesus Oliveras battle is something that we still wanna see in 2024 and 2025. Very nice. So gentle, putting that weight back down. And would you say another 20 kilos? I would say another 15, I think 20 may be pushing it, to be honest. Um, just with his trends, it seems like he's very explosive, but then, you know, towards the end of the lifts, it gets a little shaky. Um, I, I would say anywhere 10 to 15. And Enrique Lugo, 335 kilos. This will move him from 910 to 920 where Tristan, currently at 902.5, but if Tristan hits his second, we'll be at 922.5. Such a close battle on the podium. To get to the podium, sorry, for the 120 pluses. And that 10 kilos slowed him down a little bit. A little bit, but honestly, it just looks the same. It is really hard to tell with Lugo. Jonathan. 337.5. That bar is loaded and ready for Jonathan. 
And Jonathan's been looking really strong today, just overall. I'm excited to see how this second attempt moves. I believe this is two and a half kilos under his best. No, seven and a half kilos under his best, but still making easy work of that. The lift is good. Our next one for Tristan Nazelrod. We'll be taking a second attempt at... Now, Tristan Nazelrod, this will move him, or keep him, sorry, in fourth position. No, this will move him temporarily to third. Still got another round of deadlifts to go. Obviously, Ray Williams got the lead, Pablo from there. But Nasalrod and Lugo in a battle for the podium in the 120 pluses. And the lift is good, three white lights. Our next lifter, Reagan Henderson. We'll be attempting Reagan Henderson, 350 kilos. 350 kilos. Reagan is definitely ready and in the mood. Smiles on. He knows that he's strong on the day. Reagan finding the proper spot on the platform for his second pull. Now he should feel confident because he has pulled 800 pounds before. So this should be very easy for him. Very smooth. Snappy second pull. Reagan's happy. Mike T up next, 360 kilos. I'd be very shocked if he doesn't throw 367.5 on there. Mike has always been able to deadlift. This will bring him up to 895. Comfortably in third place for the, one tw for the 120s. 895 is a good total. Very good total. He'll probably break into the 900s on his final pull. Matt Gary on the side paying close attention. You know what, he revved the engine, but 360 was there. What do you think, Brennan? Five more kilos, seven and a half? I would say seven and a half to 10. The way he revved the engine worried me a little bit, but as soon as it actually got lifted off the ground, it looked like he was in his comfort zone. So it, it looked strong. Devin Williams, a big 360 kilos for his second attempt as well. This will bring his total up to 955.5, which will equal his, nope, that'll surpass his previous personal best. Previously 950.5. Every deadlift counts. Devin, in a moment when he needs to hit, has not missed all day, putting the pressure on Bob. Wow, he's got more in the tank, too. Yeah. I think they're going to load whatever they need. Depending on what Bob does, they're yeah. going to load whatever is necessary for him to get a win. Yeah, that's the conversation, right? If if Bob hits this, if, if it Bob, changes some things. But if Bob misses, well, they just have to beat his current total. Well, actually, they already have the current. Bob is only at 945. They're already ahead of Bob if right. Bob misses. Bob needs the second deadlift which we already knew going into this, he needs his pulls. Once now, again, makes the second deadlift, makes it really hard on Deb. Not impossible, but makes it really hard on Deb. But Bob really has gone all in with the second deadlift already. If he misses, Bob's, Bob's won. And that's a, that's a very much an all-in proposition they put themselves in. Very in much. the second round of deadlifts. <laughs> this, is, this is a lot of pressure for a second round of deads. 
But it depends on Bob's true top and strength. Right. Yeah, maybe this is well underneath that. Just a little hold up. Like I said, when it comes to crazy jumps, when it comes to being the man in the moment, <laughs> Bob is that guy. He is the one that you could bet on to make the crazy jumps, do the crazy attempts, and actually still turn out and be successful. But it's just who would have thought we'd be having this conversation where Bob is in a position where he needs to hit or he might possibly lose. If he can't hit 378.5 today, he loses. Yeah. And that was Devin's role to make Bob uncomfortable and push him into these positions. And here we are. Now, can Bob rise to the occasion? His slot on Team USA hangs in the balance. He's hit 385 before, and we anticipate he's stronger than that now. And Bob is battle-tested. So he has already been in a battle with Asheruska, who is already on Team USA. He lost that battle, but it was very close. So he's used to being put in these positions to try and rise to the top. What? <laughs> to wait, make Bob a... wait? <laughs> Bob is barely able to contain himself back here. What is going on? I mean, the tension was already high. And now Bob is like, this is the fight to get on the Team USA. All right, here we are. This is his moment. Will he punch his ticket and join the rest of us in Lithuania? The crowd knows he needs this pull to keep his hopes alive. This is huge for Team Kraft. Come on, Bob. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he also, like Mike T, rev the engine, but yep. never in doubt, locking out 378.5. He hit him with a swivel, lights. making his dance on his way to Lithuania. Devin still has a chance to try and take it from Bob, but Bob looked like he still had room left on that deadlift. I can't wait to leave after this and embrace my teammate. But Nine. he has to seal the deal. 978.5, by the way, also beats Dennis Cornelius's, or equals Dennis Cornelius's eight, wait, hold on a second, okay. Eight, 978.5 is the world record held by Dennis Cornelius, and Bob is currently at 978.5. So he's equaling Dennis yep. Cornelius's all-time world record. And that record hasn't been touched in how long? Oh, you're going to make me do my research. <laughs> Off the top of my head, I believe 2017-ish. It's been, I know as long as I've been in the sport, which has been 2017, no one has touched Dennis Cornelius. He has been just this name that still rings about, even though he's not even lifting on the platform. And now we finally have someone touching that total. William O'Neill White, just a little too heavy, 340, comes out of his hands at lockout. Our next weight, 755. Our lifter is Robert Lazarin. 342.5 for Robert Lazarin, 120 plus. And it looks like Devin isn't making any attempt changes or anything like that. They're going with the 375. That will solidify his second place. Looks like Bob did do the job, secured his ticket to Lithuania. We have another craft member going on Team USA, going internationally. This is an excellent, excellent PA Nats. Yeah, unless Devin makes a last minute change, but that would be a, a massive ask for Devin. 375 is a huge pull, and he would need to put on. I, I mean, obviously, he weighs more, so. He would have to put on another 10 kilos, because yeah, he couldn't do big, just seven and a half. That's a big ask due to the extra body weight. Ty goes to the lighter man, which is obviously Bob. Robert Lazarin, 342.5. Now, having said that, if Devin were to add those extra kilos, Mike T is too far back to threaten a silver medal. His silver medal is not in doubt. So he could load up and risk nothing, taking a swing and a Hail Mary pass for Bob's gold medal. He does have two attempt changes. We'll keep you updated, but first, Enrique Lugo, 345. This will move his total to 930. If he makes this, he will go from fourth to third place in the unlimited category. This is for third place. It'll be a big pull for third. 
And right up, lockout slows. Can he lock it up? Oh. So close. Comes out of his hands. And Tristan Nazarod secure in his third place in the 120 pluses. Speaking of the 120 pluses, Ray Williams, 350, 15 kilo jump. You said 15 was probably appropriate. Yep. Matt and Susie Gary agree. It's always really good when you're on the same page as Matt and Susie. That's right. You know? I, yeah. it, it, it feels good. It feels good to my soul. This would bring his total up to 1037.5. Let's go, Ray. Finish strong. Yes, sir. Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. you know what? A very smooth final pull for Ray. He probably had some room in the tank, but finishes off three for three in the deadlifts and finishes off all intact. I remember last time we seen him at PA Nats, suffered an injury, set him back a little bit. He didn't need to load up anymore. He already had the win secured. So I think it was the appropriate call. That's the best thing you could do is leave a competition with momentum, being healthy, versus setting yourself back for going for an unnecessary number. Especially if you're not under pressure to do so. Pablo Oliveris, 350 as well for his final pull. This would bring him to 970. He's secure in the civil medal position. And this will be a nice PR for him all together. Finish it, finish uh -oh. it, finish it, finish it. Coming mm. out of his hands, unable to hold it. So close. So close. Strength was there. It's just we have to bring the standard along with the strength. He'll get it next time. Jonathan, 352.5. We're staying in the 120 plus. Jonathan in the top five. Bar is low. Jonathan. Said bring his total from 892 and a half to 907.5. And that is a huge 2K total. Still something that a lot of us are trying to achieve in this sport, no matter the weight class. And this would be a seven and a half kilo PR for him on deadlift. Let's go, come on, finish. Let's go, Jonathan if 2K is there, you have to shoot for it. There was no need to go 2.5K kilos less. He solidified in his placing. I'm here for the decision to go for that. Yeah, it's a milestone. If it's achievable, you take a swing on a Tristan nasal rod, 352.5 in the 120 pluses. Tristan, bronze medalist already. Trying to see how much more he can add to his already amazing total. This will bring him to 932.5. Solid. A career best performance. Amazing showcasing of just getting the job done. I believe he went nine for nine, correct? Yep. Tristan did, yes. Nine for nine day, being able to beat his old total. Amazing performance. Mike T now, 365, five kilo jump. We thought that's probably where they'd go. It'd land them an even 900 kilo total. Car is loaded for Michael Tuchero. And this is 804, 804 pounds. No matter what, that's still a lot of weight. Mike once again revs the engine to complete that one, and Mike is pumped up, steadies himself. Very rare you see a calm, cool, and collected contender like Mike show that kind of emotion. You know what meant a lot to re-enter the 900 kilo mark. Yep. 
and Devin Williams, 120 kilos. No last second surprises. He's going to go out there for the 375, solidify his second place finish, get the big PR total, and then build off of this momentum. 970.5 is what he'd walk away with. That's beyond the winning total that won the IPF World Championships last summer. Devin is world class. Do not mistake that. Now the question is, Bob still has 390.5 loaded up. Now do you think he's coming out here to get that 990 total? <sighs> With Bob, I... <laughs> Very hard to call. <laughs> Nope, oh, uh, too much today. Great showing. Gave us a battle that we're all, we were all anticipating. Look forward to seeing how he builds off this in the future. Regan Henderson in the 120s has an opportunity to pull himself from fourth place to third place and knock Mike T off the podium with this 377.5 kilo pull. And he was feeling good on the second. And this is what you do when you have a big deadlift. You use that to your advantage and you secure some placings because what do you have to lose? He's battling a legend. He'll equal 900 kilos even, the same as Mike T, but he weighed in lighter. Ty goes to the lighter man. Oh my goodness, he did and it. And Henderson. Knocks Mike T off the podium. what you do. And collects that bronze medal at Powerlifting America Nationals. To be a rookie at PA NAS and knock off a legend like Mike T in your first showcasing, you couldn't ask for a better experience. And Bob looks like he's soaking up that energy as it rolls by him. 390.5. It is a monstrous final pull that will bring his total to 990.5. An insane total for a 120 lifter who actually, by the way, weighs 106. Now this, because <laughs> I know Bob, is for no other reason than to send a shot and a message to everyone across the world internationally that he is here and that he is better than all of you. This how, is what this deadlift means. How special a talent is Bob Matthews weighing 106 kilos looking for 990.5? Come on, come on. Ah, a little too much on the day. But he's a showman for loading it up. Sure and Bob is. Matthews oh, he got cramps. <laughs> lived up to the hype. <laughs> he is cramping up. But my goodness, to get that off the floor, Let's me know that if you would have dropped it like another, what, 10 keys, another seven and a half keys? My goodness. And there is your Powerlifting America 120 national champion. Thank you for joining us. Signing off live from Reno, Nevada, Ryan Sixpack 